facts. Maybe I need the lyrics a little bit. Yeah. Right. Also, guys, anybody who's watching this now, and I apologize because you missed some sweet, sweet riffing uh, before the video, the video started. But continue, Mimi, as if nobody is here and watching as they are. Right. We were I speaking of about your himbos. himbos. Your himbos. Yeah, yeah. Leo. Anthropomorphic but... animals, crushes, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, the kind the gotcha. kinds of anthropomorphic <clears throat> animals that everybody has a crush on. Mm -hmm. And like, like, like Maleficent, first. the dragon. Everybody loves Maleficent as the dragon in dragon what? form. Well, they're hot. Super so. hot. Like, like literally, yeah. she's hot. And also kind of necrotic. So that's exciting. So that that that's some some Venn diagram crossing there for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not sure how that would work. Like in the same way, I don't know how a dragon and donkey work, but apparently it clearly did. Look, fact. if you've ever played D&D, &D, you know, dragons famously get it on with literally anything that moves. So right. hey, that <laughs> rock's, rolling, that rock's rolling downhill. <laughs> I've never yet encountered, I've only been playing D&D &D this year, so I've never yet encountered a dragon in D&D. &D. I'm not like that level yet. Do you know what I mean? No, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When you do, tell us how it went, because it'll you. be... I'm sure it'll be epic the way that Carlos runs it. I will. Uh, I'll write a body song about it, like Deborah <laughs> suggested. Oh, it's that kind of D and D game. All right, <laughs> D and D after dark. That's right. Well, well shall we get started? Well, it has dragons and dungeons. Like, what else do you need? Right. I mean, <laughs> you don't even need the dog. You just need the bee, right? <laughs> and you need the talk M. about being I down bad. All you, need. you know, I guess. so awesome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to part two of Negocios and Malice, and this is definitely going to be after dark. <laughs> I am your host and your AI computer, Carlos Fernandez. I am uh, one of the co-creators of this game with CSE Cooney. I almost called you CSE Cooney because I have Cooney <laughs> on the brain. I'm teaching all day C long. CSE Cutie. Hey. I hey. hope that that's where you were going. I hope it was the CSE Cutie Patootie. Uh -huh. And yes, uh, yes. I've got way I too am. much Cutie in my brain and I will delete it soon. But welcome, everybody. So, um, what our players are going to do is they're going to remind us who their characters are. Now, in the last session, we built our characters, we built relationships between characters, we built our individual world with some uh, cool plot developments that people did, all by drawing cards from the deck of destiny, which is uh, the core mechanic of the game. In this game, we're actually going to build out the plot and the threat that faces the nation. Uh, players had been interested in having a sort of like a royal wedding kind of plot, which, well, as you know, today, Queen Elizabeth has died. Queen Elizabeth II oh, has passed today. Oh, so oh, I actually, did not know that because I was working all day. Yeah, huh. she passed today. Uh, so it is kind of an interesting day to be talking about royal weddings and secessions and the should fate we just, of Should we just flip over to royal funeral? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could. <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> Too soon. We could do whatever we Listen, whatever the, the, want. Inter the internet did not wait until the body was cold to stop to start dropping memes. It just. Oh my gosh, it's all memes. Uh, just, it's, it, it's pretty rough. Yeah, Dude, take I a look no at idea. what Ireland is doing right now. I, will Google I mean, this I'm not saying my name is Liam Burke and I feel a certain way, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, like, yeah. get on a tangent. My, my friend, my friend Matt, when he told me about it, he actually cackled. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? What? Okay, you can't queen go do that do? far. Jesus, respect you're the dead even, and all. You're but... from Baltimore. What, <laughs> what? What has the Queen done to Baltimore? Well, I should know that. <laughs> oh, you know. Uh, <laughs> she knows. She knows what she did. Okay. So, um, what we're going to do, friends, is have you in uh, uh, an order that we'll establish in a moment. Uh, have you just review your characters out loud for the audience and most likely for yourselves as well. Remind you who you had rolled up. When you do that, also remind yourselves what four cards on your character sheet, because those four cards are going to play a very important role uh, in the upcoming uh, plot. So um, the order that I have on my roll 20 is Viana, Jose, Melitza, and Rodriguez. So why don't we use that as our order? Viana, tell us who you are. So Viana is my character. This is Claire talking, if this is just podcast landia for some of you. Then Viana de Ularia de Alvar. So we use the, the term then for short for venerable as a gender neutral honorific rather than Mr. or Mrs. That's just something that Don Carlos and I built yeah. in world. Party, say it again. Not Don or Doña. 
Yeah, um, we we wanted something that was like uh, respectful, but not but not gendered. So um, so it indicates that my character is of higher rank or likes to think she is anyway. Um, her we have four attributes per character: motivation, rolling court, magic, and doom. My character, Viana's character's motivation is she comes from a family of scientists and diplomats, mathematicians and military strategists. She was always considered the intellectual runt of the family. She's worked all her life to prove her worth and eventually became an archivist, not a highly placed archivist in Reina Resoluta's royal libraries. It hasn't won her family's respect, but she loves being an archivist and she's determined that they will see her value someday. Her role in court, uh, as previously mentioned, she's Her Majesty's archivist. She's a sub-librarian in charge of the religions and rituals and former deities of Espada sections. She knows a lot about religions before the present one gained ascendancy. That's the, you know, the worship of La Diosa. Her magic that she got from the aliens, the aliens who, mind you, she thinks are devils that she's made a bargain with, but they just want her to join the cosmic consciousness. Her magic is... Well, she was lonely. She wants an ally that loved her and believed in her. She wanted a, a familiar, a fetch. So the benefactors, what they call the alien devils, the benefactors gave her a strange crimson ball that can, when she feeds it a drop of her blood, activate into a small monkey-like creature that's telepathically bonded with me. So it can go to places I can't, listen to conversations and transmit them back to me, steal things I need, carry messages. They last the length of a single task. And if I want, and then they return to their glass ball form, which comes back to me, but another drop of blood reawakens them to another task. Um, my doom, which I believe, since I've made a bargain with devils, I believe that one day I will have a doom equal to this terrible thing I've done. Benefactors wouldn't have given me a doom if I hadn't insisted on it, but hey, that's my culture. Um, my doom is, when my doom comes upon me, every time I open my mouth, something weird and mouth related will come out of it. Bubbles, bones, fire, vapor, ground pebbles, whole fruit. The objects that come out will be expressive of what I mean to say, but will no longer be able to speak in words. So that's my character. Do we want to go right into relationships or do that as a separate round, Carly? No, yeah, we'll do that in a separate round right. so that people know who is who with those relationships. Excellent summary, including some important game mechanics. Thank you so much. Jose Diaz, tell us who you are. Well, first, I want to say, goddamn, C.S.E. Cooney, you are the ringer when it is giving the feedback. I kind of wish that I went after you <laughs> <laughs> in all these regards. Uh, also want to say... Uh, that by the way, this is also if you guys are watching this uh, live, you are watching something that we, they're we're doing for the Clydecast NYC, a podcast of Brooklyn, New York, uh, to kind of to do two things: to help established writers uh, get another payday for really good, really good work, and also to highlight the really amazing professional work of newly published writers from the New York City area, even Staten Island. Although I haven't seen one in the wilds of Brooklyn speculative fiction writers yet, but you know, you know, unicorns exist. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so thank you all for tuning in because your money goes to helping that cause paying professionally. And this year we're going to actually start as well, uh, opening up submissions to the students and the, uh, the graduates of the Octavia project, which is a, uh, a New York city, but really Brooklyn based, uh, summer camp for, for, for city born kids to learn through STEM, but really to learn through speculative fiction. Uh, so, uh, we will be, uh, 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 once we get to 100 subscribers, we'll be giving them a month of income, and we are opening submissions, and we're going to give them some uh, help in trying to get their stories revised, edited, give them mentorship. So please, your money is going towards helping Brooklyn, period. So um, I'm going to get into me. If you notice, I'm this is not Cameron. This is Jose Diaz, and I'm not going to do a Hispanic accent because it'll be really racist because the way I do it is just not good. So why even try? So uh, my character, Jose Diaz, uh, his motivation card is even dragons are murdered for their gold. I have to thank Liam for letting that one stick around for me because he knows me. He's a good friend. Uh, my description uh, of my character, he's in it for the knowledge. Uh, he, I, was given my first book when I was five. And by given, it means stolen. I come from a family of thieves. 
uh, there was a ceremony of gold and honey uh, when my first book was stolen. And now I follow in the tradition of my family, hunting for knowledge of all kinds, the rarer, the better. My role in court is kind of the opposite of what I do. I'm kind of the inside man. I am the trained, oh, sorry, my, I'm saying this, <laughs> I'm gonna start, this is my role in court, it's not. It's the trained tongue enjoys little, a little bitterness. That is not my role in court. Um, I am in internal affairs. Uh, this office finds all demonic or evil or bad books, which is a very broad category, and takes them to a vault that is meant to be studied and then destroyed, unless you know something happens on the way to the vault. You know, that also sounds racist. I'm not gonna do that voice either, so I'm gonna keep on going. <laughs> uh, my my magic uh, is, um, uh, the card is, if it unlocks, it is a lock pick. I am a, I am a deadly secret hunter, but with my fists, I have the Cypher Strike. Uh, his hands are a cipher. He absorbs secrets, something unknown to him with his touch. It's kind of like a dim mock, you know, of secret taking. Oh, cool. uh, the more difficult the cipher, the longer he needs to hold on contact. And his doom, the card was, and yet, however, stumbling progress. Honestly, the card doesn't really make sense for what I did because I just wouldn't do this. I just kind of went with it. Uh, he and his family are not completely human. There's no word for them purposefully lore on them is rare again on purpose uh they make sure to hide knowledge of themselves because they are delicious they we taste like roast pork and heroin and he <laughs> has to wear a specific cologne to hide his fragrant musk and people smell him and just happen to you know take a nibble oh that's it uh, it, uh it's unstoppable they are going to try and eat me and they cannot stop themselves from eating me and it could very well be the end so i do my very best not to sweat wow <laughs> gosh. that is amazing cam and i'm just imagining you at one of our faculty meetings where we regularly consume people anyway you well. know like <laughs> you know this character would be dead you know after, like, the second meeting amazing excellent thank you so much malitza tell us all about yourself Hi, um, so I am Melissa Exposita, and the person speaking is Mimi Mondal. Um, let me see what I did. So Melissa Exposita is called uh, the Royal Mirror, and the reason she's called that is that she largely exists in the royal, like exists in the palace, because she resembles the queen, and she resembles Reina Resoluta. Um, may or may or may not be the same age as her because i mean melissa does have a beginning that we know of like she was found as a foundling as a child and because of her budding resemblance to the queen she was kept in the palace and like raised in the palace so uh what she does as the royal mirror she is she i mean she does the food tasting but she also just like appears as a decoy of Reina Resoluta at places where, I mean, where either it's too dangerous or too boring. <laughs> to, like, you know, wherever she doesn't want to really spend her time. So, you know, I mean, she's probably also going to like these tough negotiations or something, but she's also probably um, sitting for the portraits, things like that. Um, so the magic that Melissa has, which like not many people know about, is that she can turn herself with, into anybody else's doppelganger as well by sniffing their scent. Hmm. And the only way an opponent can figure out that I'm not that person is by making it impossible for me to smell their scent, in which case I slowly revert to my original appearance, which is the Reina's doppelganger. So at that point, people think it's the Reina right um <laughs> convenient so yeah i mean it, this doesn't happen a lot but so um my doom is like as a child i was remarkably healthy but ever since i gained this magic every time the chill winds come in from the north and they do a lot do that a lot i catch a vicious flu and mm -hmm. then i can't even smell my own scent and like the older I get, or like every time I get that flu, it gets like more and more severe uh, and it's longer and it's like takes harder like to overcome it. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that at some point I will die of it like in an untimely way. 
uh, in which is why I no longer spend a lot of time outdoors. Not that I did before because my function was largely inside the palace, but like I may take even more care not to spend a lot of time outdoors. And if I do have to go outdoors, I go like covered from head to toe in a cloak or in a mask. And I have like cotton balls stuffed into my nostrils. So uh, yeah. Awesome. You know, I was thinking that your power might be pretty hard to use, except that you look exactly like the queen. So like, you can just go up to anybody and smell them and be like, oh, of course, my queen, here's my neck, smell some more. You can do whatever <laughs> you want, queen. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good thing that you look like the queen. So, and I, I don't know, Cam, if you were trying to say something or if you just raised your hand. No, just commands you, I raise your arms. <laughs> Show me what you're working with. Oh, okay. Show me your pits. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you smell of roast pork? And like then I just turn into a roast pork instead. <laughs> Don't forget the cocaine. The sprinkle yeah. on there. Yeah, okay, yeah the cocaine is like little powdered cocaine on top of the roast pork, like mm. you know, seasoning. Imagine yeah, a powdered yeah. donut except pork. Just seasoning. <laughs> Salt <laughs> thing, you know. Rodriguez. You're Hi. Right. Yeah. So, um, I am Rodriguez de Fair. Um, my alter ego is Liam Burke. But uh, yeah, in this game, I am Rodriguez de Fair, and uh, my my card for motivation was roots enough can bring the castle down. Um, and the way I interpreted that was that he is a, a trickster, more specifically a world breaker. Mm -hmm. um, throughout his life, for whatever reason or or another. He has seen the corruption of the system and knows that it needs to be brought down violently if need be, um, but uh, brought down nonetheless. So um, in order for the you know society he's a part of and loves to be reborn. Um, and uh, his role in court, my card was language walks you on its leash. And so how I interpreted that is, is that he is the court jester but also more specifically the court spy master um everyone kind of knows him as the jester and they know not to talk to him too long but they know that if you're in the know i should say like a more specific in the know you know that he's the spy master more specifically he's the guy that's going to tell the authorities whether or not you need to go bye-bye and uh you know if you pay him the right way or do him the right favor or whatnot maybe your transgressions get forgotten about maybe they don't hmm. and uh he is he is known by you know those who are in the know as they who growls back mm -hmm. he's kind of like the dog of the court you know barking at the things that need to be taken out um his magic the card i i drew was how many have died by friendly knives and the the power that i decided that interpreted into was that through a few lines of dialogue, he can cause whoever he's speaking to to take one action that can be described in no more than seven words. Now, that's pretty interesting because he doesn't have any control over how they interpret it, but they will, to the best of their ability, attempt to complete that task, whatever it is. So if he tells them to, you know, go F themselves, they're going to be busy for a while. If he tells them, <laughs> if he tells them to go, you know, walk into the stars, they're going to be standing around jumping at the sky for however long it takes for them to figure out that they can't actually do that. Um, but the thing that he uses it the most for is to say, tell me your secrets or something along those lines. And that's how he ends up finding who is actually a threat and who isn't actually a threat. And if they're enough of a threat, maybe he tells them, tells some of their friends, hey, maybe go kill your friend. And then that's where the have died by friendly knives comes in. Hmm. So. This, gets, this gets dark. Yeah, he's a dark guy. Yeah. Um, so he's probably the most political other than uh, Esposita, I'd say, um, out of the four of us. Um, and then his doom, uh, the card was how perfect the poem before it is written. And it's kind of like, a, I interpret it as kind of like a jab at his intentions and his his machinations of how he does them, is that since he is involved so much in all of this corruption and, and who is wrong and who is right, 
uh, Sister Maria has told the Inquisition about him and they have come to execute him is his doom. Someday, this settings version of the Inquisition is going to find out about him because he is going to have told the wrong secret or pissed off the wrong noble and not, you know, covered his tracks well enough. And they're just going to bury him. Yeah. Interesting. We'll see how that plays out in the game. Excellent job, everybody. Before we go on to your relationships, which, you know, you'll just look at your character sheet and describe your relationships in a moment as well. I do want to mention that Deborah did a slapping job of developing, you know, basically an NPC alongside that may indeed make an appearance here. So I want to see Deborah, would you want to talk a little bit about uh, Mari Marinel uh, Curie? Uh, I could do just a really quick overview. I do have a bit of a sore throat, so I'm going to try oh. to keep it brief. Um, so her motivation was drawn off of language walks you on its leash. Uh, so her role at court is that she's a diplomat scribe. Um, or was that what her, I'm sorry, what is the first card to find? Is it the motivation? They, motivation, okay. So her entire life is circumscribed by language, both finding the perfect turn of phrase um, for her lady's political agenda, as well as the perfect flourish in calligraphy. Um, but the role at court was to cease loving, simply plug your nose, which is where the part-time perfumier uh, role comes in. Uh, but she has a very select practice that centers on covering up one's true occupation with misleading sense. So it sounds like a few of you might be customers of her unique blends that she develops. Uh, so like, for example, instead of smelling of parchment and nut galls common to uh, their practice of scribe, they personally smell of cedar and cinnamon and they can hide others' occupations through sense. Um, the magic that they bargained for uh, was drawn off of the card, is that the cry of a dying star? Uh, so their secret power is that they can touch, smell, or taste anything and have an immediate kind of mental understanding of that item's components. Hmm. Uh, so they immediately know the ingredients, every ingredient in a delicious soup, or they can tell if their tea has been poisoned or they can uh, sample a rival's perfume and break it down into its component parts and know how to replicate it. You can also pick up a PhD thesis and see if it's been plagiarized. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they immediately know all the sources and can just mentally cross-reference them and know where the original publications were. That's absolutely a thing. Uh, but they, uh, they also find this exhausting because they touch everything and everything gives them information. So yeah. they definitely bankroll their local Glover. Um, and finally their doom, uh, which as, as Claire pointed out is their culture. They have to have one, even though they don't actually have to have one. Um, they know too many things. So it's just a matter of time before they accidentally mention something that they shouldn't know to the wrong person. And it just remains to be seen whether that'll be a minor inconvenience or, you know, cost them their lives. Perfect. Thank you so much, Deborah. Now, you've played a special role uh, in the time uh, that we had last time because you were you were just developing this character so well that it's kind of become part of the mythos, like Jose really needs this person to keep him alive, you know, to hide his son. But um, what I want to say is to both you, Deborah, and Holden, the way that you can participate um, and this uh, players is uh, if, if you are feeling inviting and saucy, uh, a little adventuresome, uh, you can basically invite uh, the uh, people who are attending to interpret a card uh, when, once we draw it. So once we get to the role play portion, you're going to be drawing cards for successes and failures. You don't have to determine from the card if it's a success or failure because the, the card does that for you. But what happens as a result of the success or the failure? I mean, sometimes you'll want to do it yourself because it's fun to do that. But maybe sometimes you can throw it to Holden and or Deborah. So that might be a really fun way to uh, let a little spice enter uh, the game here. I definitely I feel question, like they're like rolling like like ghost ghost muses just waiting to be called upon in the game. Ghost yeah. Uh, Carlos, the um the the NPC that the chat made with Deborah helming it last time, um, I don't see them in the uh, under the NPCs that we have. Are they in there? 
No, because Deborah was making it, you know, she was playing along with us like the audience often does yeah. but she did such a cool job and was sharing such cool things that we i think we've kind of promoted her to kind of like a, an honorary npc plus but right. not really one that would be playable by other characters until somebody actually decides to do that right i just was wondering if i should input that information into an npc so that we have that card for reference if we wanted to play them I see. I think what we'll do is we'll just not input it right now, but we'll know that uh, Marinel is available for as an NPC for anybody who wants it. And you know, if you have any questions about uh, Marinel's character, is a great way to bring Deborah into the game too. So, uh, with that, what we're going to do is talk about uh, the relationships that all the characters have. Uh, Claire, why don't you start us off and tell us of Viana's relationship, her, her primary relationship that you established last game. Certainly. So then Viana has a relationship um, primarily with Jose Diaz, as played by Cam Robb. Uh, Viana, remember, is an archivist, caught him stealing from my library. Because remember, I'm rare books of... Uh, like excised religions and he's into banned books and evil books and often old religions are created to be like are sort of by the new religion are created to be evil so he was stealing one of my books i thought he was going to take it away to burn it um and was gonna you know i don't know smack him upside the head with one of my books maybe but he assured me that he's only you know just taking it to keep it for himself and that it won't be burned and so we decided that we were going to between us start a secret library called los archivos infernales full ha. of banned texts on the old religions philosophical treatises of other worlds other planes um and we are the dark web we're the dark web and the benefactors are super not into banned books and they totally want us to learn more about them so they secretly slip texts into our library from time to time to liven things up that's our relationship. It's so cool. <laughs> Can't wait till you go exploring the archive, you know, and <laughs> you find, you know, a text from the year 9000. Uh, awesome. Cool. Great. Uh, uh, I, I have some additional notes on that in my sheet. We work together to secure powerful books curated from a special selection of visiting gods. They don't usually appear, but there are bits and clues of a particular god of pearls, a nymph like mm -hmm. being who steals baubles that the gods use as currency. Nice. Um, and so uh, that's Jose's relationship goes right back to Viana. Is that what you have mm -hmm. on your show? Excellent. Yes. So yeah, that one was further enriched. Belitza, who do you have a relationship with? You? Sorry, yeah, I, I forget that's my name. But, um, my relationship is with then Vienna, and I will find it in a second. Yes. So I owe a debt to Ven Vienna because her monkey technically um, saw me transform into the head librarian um, in like maybe one of the alleyways of the library. So um, <laughs> for, for her silence about my shape-shifting shape ability, which not many people know about, uh, I promised her one turn in in turning into one person for whatever she needs to be done so awesome. i yeah so you also I've then have the ability, yeah you hmm? you're, you have the ability to transform other people as well no 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 from like i will transform oh. into whoever when vienna requires to be transformed into and then do the thing awesome got a little secret in your pocket there Love it. And Rodriguez. See, si. So my relationship is one-sided mostly uh, with Melisa Esposita um, in that he has pointed indifference towards her. Um, he knows he knows who she is and what she's about. She's the queen's body double. And so he doesn't pay any attention to her whatsoever because he already knows what she's about. Everyone else he's kind of interested in and wants to know what they're doing and what they're up to and sees them as a potential threat or, you know, somebody he can use or something like that. But Esposito, he's like, nah. He he's just fine. thinks I'm stupid. <laughs> no, no, like, don't think you're, yeah, I don't think you're stupid. I just think you're super <laughs> uninteresting. 
which is maybe almost worse. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, know, like, basically, I don't have a personality because I am a body double. Well, you're literally a self-insert, you know, because the uh, you insert yourself as the queen. Right. So he's like, but, oh, yeah, I don't need to pay attention to that. Like an but Oscar you don't know film. that I can shape shift to other people. No, I just know that you look like the queen. So, like, what else would you be doing but looking like the queen? So right, right. yeah, I can just count that one. I mean, there are yeah. very limited options if you look like the queen. You can't just right. like walk go walking yeah. down the street or something, right? Yeah. yeah. How, how are you going to spy on anything if you're like looking like the queen? So no, she's definitely totally trustworthy, and don't need to worry about her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to imagine the queen. Totally don't need to worry about me at all. I agree. No, no, it's totally <laughs> innocuous. Excellent. So I'm going to ask all of us to open, but not try to edit the world building, your Gloriana document. It should be at the top of your f newspaper little folder there. And uh, we're going to look at the different answers. Uh, maybe we'll just go in the same order and just have Claire read number one, uh, Cam, you'll read number two, uh, and, and just so on, and just have us reread the sort of world building uh, that we've done so far, uh, just to remind people that so like the world is always Espada uh, and Espada is this country that is basically a stand in for like 15th century Spain right on the verge of an inquisition. It's on a little island uh, with another massive nation called Pelea which literally means fight in Spanish and there's lots of historical fighting that goes on there. But every time you play the game you draw cards and there's different stuff that's going on in the nation at this time. So Claire, why don't you tell us one of the first things that's going on in the nation? Sorry, what uh, what card are we are we touching? Are we so if if you look under the newspaper, it's world building your Gloriana. The very first one. Yeah, and, and then, and then you just scroll to, downwards on that. Yeah. We want mm -hmm. to resist trying to edit this since we all have it open. So I know that I have to just tell myself that because I'm constantly like, you know, because we're writers, right? We're constantly like editing and saving. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. The question, and I forget who answered which question, but the what the question that was pulled was what is the odd thing about espada's water so what's the odd thing about our country's water and whoever drew a card to interpret it answered it this way the thing is over time during reina's reign the water has been connecting to another body of water across dimensions anyone who drinks of it the veils between these dimensions are thin, so weird shit uh -oh. is coming through. Uh, strange effects happen okay. to people who drink it, or um, but not usually permanent. Like, the wizards are permanently affected by their magic, but the people who drink the water are temporarily right. affected oh. by the magic. Oh. Oh. The water gives you unasked for effects. Mutation, long life, there's just no control over it. Um, this is going to be tied to a mysterious pearl and mall and a huge mollusk and the benefactors that will become clear later i'm almost sure of it i think then jose diaz i think you're next yeah i'm, I'm sorry i'm having some issues about connectivity it just kind of bounced me out and like, i'm trying to click on the world building your gloriano but it's nothing's happening you might have to refresh world 20. i can share my screen if it would make it easier right now yes so so all the people could see that too all right um no, i don't want to see that been a little more difficult to report uh ah so i'm going to scroll down see i don't think I can question make the two any bigger yeah but okay, so. question two here we go right uh, uh who is the child prophet who has recently been performing miracles to the poor and the forgotten uh, she is Lucita, no last name, the prophet with a capital P. She knows who needs a miracle the most, and she's there and ready to perform said miracle. The miracle Cam, can you lean forward? I'm having trouble yep. hearing. I just figured that out. Uh, the miracle often causes her to be sought after by exploited people, and she keeps tanking the economy, and the powers that be are after her. She just gives the people what they need with no thought to the consequences. She is seven. Excellent. I do I remember that means that she can manifest money and she is so she's tanking the economy because she's manifesting money? That's right. exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, so Melitza <laughs> slash Mimi. Uh, this Did is you just question. pronounce me like pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Melitza the pizza. Yes. 
30 minutes or less. Um, what are Larina's plans for conquest? The benefactors that she has been feeding the bodies to, huh? I mean, I, I feel like I missed an earlier section. There was but, a, the pearl that she has that she feeds bodies to. Yeah, uh, I think that's like the question four oh, or maybe right. whatever. We, we didn't um, remind us of, we created La Reina first before we went into the world building. And mm -hmm. so a bunch of weird stuff happened in the creation of La Reina that we're referring to here. Mm -hmm. Hello. Should I just go on? Yeah, go ahead for right now. We can just remind each other. We're trying to do this fast and informally if so, we can. So, so, uh, so what we are looking at in this section are two different sets of aliens, maybe, but the public doesn't really know. So the benefactors that she has been feeding the bodies of the people that she duels and kills are the children of the aliens. And they're just about ready to hatch on our plane. For that to work into her plans for conquest, this is going to unlock magic for the entirety of her country, which will give them an unbeatable edge over all the other countries. And so all the issues with the magical water happens in waves. Whenever she feeds the orb, and there's an orb that we will find out about, uh, more magic is released and that causes strangeness with the water in Espada. So, uh, the water is connected to this. Now, at some point, this strangeness may become prominent. And then this being, which is like the child of the aliens, or plural, the children of the aliens, will be born here. But no one knows if it's going to do what is expected of it. But the arena, that is what she believes, that's what she hopes for. And like she has been preparing for this. She has been feeding it, her rivals, for a very long time for longer than the latest benefactors arrived. So, yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, take us home, Rodriguez. Yes, so number four is, which artist's blasphemous work has sparked new laws about censorship and why? So there's a little island called Perla, ironically, to the Southwest of the map. Obviously, they have a pearl worshiping religion. Duh. Uh, it's a small island. Most people are not native because there is a monastery on the island. The devotees of this pearl live there. The cult of the pearl, as they call themselves or are called by others, exists in Espada as well. They're mostly despised as fanatics. They have never seen Lorena's pearl. No one knows about it but Lorena. But the pearl that they worship is on their island. Nobody who's not of that cult has seen that pearl either, but the monks have been recently circulating likenesses of their pearl in Espada. The artists are these nameless monks. Their religion is spreading. The pearl god is becoming better known in Espada. The queen's government does not like this trademark. They're trying their best to stamp out the images of the pearl. So Excellent. they put up this the sign, have you seen this pearl? And she says, no. <laughs> Put up your pits. I need to smell. Okay, so then um, number five here. I think Deborah, this might have been yours here, but it's also I'm not quite sure I'm following. So it's like answer to question five is caused by the predilections of people with powers caused by the waters, and the prophet wandering around giving people whatever they need regardless of the consequences. Unfettered use of powers used in greedy or self-serving ways. So I'm not quite sure. Um, Common people with powers, but no sense of greater good, mysterious monks slash artists are using their ideas to shape or influence people. So we can use that and all of the things that you've heard here throughout the story. Also want to point out that there is a map here. This is a little parallel right here where my old pointer is. Uh, this is what uh, Rodriguez was uh, referencing there. But there are other features on the map that you might take advantage of depending on where the story uh, takes us there. Excellent, everybody. So if you are ready, we uh, are ready. Oh yeah, go ahead. Do you wanna run through the queen real fast? Oh sure, we could do that. Let me pull her up. Just maybe do like uh, bullet points. It's pretty, it's pretty fast. Okay, so here is Reina Resoluta. And so um, it's actually uh, pretty, pretty clearly marked here. If you just wanna each read your own uh, Reina Resoluta. Do you see where I pulled her up at the bottom of that newspaper right there? Yeah. Um, bottom, yes. Yeah, my marker is on it if you want to just look at my screen. 
And, oh, okay. Uh, and so Cam might be losing his connection. So if he oh, doesn't good answer, now. I'll read for him. Oh, I'm okay. Good now. Okay. Just, right on, right on. So Claire, do you want to read yours there? Sure. Uh, we What we know about Reina Resoluta. One, she's older than she seems because of a terrible bargain made and no one knows with what or why, but probably some kind of benefactor prior to the larger benefactors arriving. Cool. Liam. Reina is an excellent duelist, personally and non-lethally, that's important, dueling others who transgresses her laws instead of executing them. But some others still sometimes end up dead. <laughs> Go ahead, Cam, if you can. Uh, I can, I'm looking for... Reina Resoluta oh, at the, the bottom. bottom? Yeah. Okay. And Claire Cam. The people she duels and they survive are in her debt. And she decides when they work off their debts. Uh, no one finds the bodies of those who die, but there's a special place in her chambers where the dismembered bodies are stored. It's a large black and green pearl with a crack that seems to be spreading. I just love how this queen progresses. Like, nobody knows what bargain she made. She duels them non-lethally, but sometimes they still die. You know where she stores the bodies. <laughs> like, it, it escalates, and it only Record escalates street. more. Right. And so take us home, Mimi. It's a portal pearl. The black and green pearl exist simultaneously in two realms, in Larina's chamber, uh, which is underground or something, and inside a mollusk that is inside a sea uh, somewhere. Now the sea is wherever the mysterious benefactor comes from. And as Reina is feeding the pearl, these bodies of the people who did not die, uh, they're going somewhere. They're going to the mysterious benefactor. And this is how she gets her benefactions in exchange of these bodies. And, uh, and then that's how she and her people get the magic powers. But her people don't know this. And, and so, uh, so these dismembered bodies going into the pearl of the people who, you know, she non literally dwelled uh, are, are her bargain with this benefactor or these benefactors. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. I also just want to remind anybody, everybody, that this card might be edited throughout. So, like, as Reina Resoluta takes actions in the game, you can press edit and add notes to things. So, like, if she turns out to be a mollusk, for instance, that might be revealed in Act Three or something. You might want to Nobody make a note of that coming. here. Say again. Nobody saw that coming. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nobody suspects the mollusk. All right. So um, if we are ready, folks, we're ready now to continue with the game. So we've done our review. We left it off last time by deciding which story we thought we might want to take. And I think uh, people had decided the royal wedding was the direction they'd want to go because what better to do with a psychopathic, sociopathic queen, but marry her off. So, uh, let me just make sure, are we still in agreement that a royal wedding sounds like a fun adventure to have? Yes. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, here's how this- I, I, I am the one who has to go through the wedding, doesn't it? Oh, <laughs> well, it seems very likely that you're gonna end up married, Melitza. yeah. <laughs> or at least posing for a whole lot of pictures. One right. I have to sit through that wedding, don't I? Like, not really looking forward to it, but whatever. I mean, if Lorena <laughs> wants to get married, then a lot of people to sniff at a wedding. That's true. So, yeah, but, I mean, somebody has to take the Rena's place. So, I can't. <laughs> yeah, especially if her husband sucks, you know. Uh, Spoiler, her husband sucks. But uh, well, actually, no, he might not. We'll, we'll find out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what we've done in the game before, and we're going to read the, the preamble to the story to kind of like set the scene for us. So um, we'll follow the order that we have so far with uh, Claire, Cam, Mimi, and then uh, Rodriguez. <laughs> I just like saying that. <laughs> Liam, forgive me. Uh, but No, uh, we'll do it every time. I insist. So, uh, Claire, get us started. Uh, Where are we reading from? I'm sorry. So, if you look at I my screen, I have right here oh. the part that you're reading. Oh, I see the blue text. Right. Um, I'm reading off the roll twenty. So, at long last, Reina Resoluta is getting married. So now it would be Cam if you're there. Unmute. A pity that royals rarely get. Mary can marry for love. Wop wop. 
<laughs> Politics so, is clashing with desire in ways that will break hearts and jeopardize the stability of nations as if they aren't jeopardized already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Liam, are you there right now? I think Liam had to step away for a second, so I'll read this one. Your job as secret royal wizards of Espada? Make sure Reina Resoluta gets hitched without a hitch. Or else find a way for true love to win the day without destabilizing all of Espada in the process. Ready or not, wizards, here comes the bride. <laughs> Excellent. Good sinister way. voice there. Like, hi. Yeah. Because I'm the bride. <laughs> hi, I'm the bride. He's scared. All right. So what we're going to do, friends, is uh, we're going to each pick one of the cards down here. And you're going to pick a card from the Baraja del Destino in order to figure out how to interpret that card as well. So here are your six cards. Maybe I'll make mm -hmm. this one notch bigger. So and it's Carlos, a on my roll 20, the only deck that is apparent to me is the Build Your World. And when you share your screen, I see that the Baraja del Destino is up, but it's not up on mine, no matter how big or small I make things. I see, yeah, give me a second here. Um, it might be just a matter of me getting into here and moving something. Well, mine is fine, I think. Maybe. So. This is what you don't see this, Claire. Um, I don't see the baraja on mine. I can try to close out and. Oh and no 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 no! You don't have to see the baraja. I'm I'm the baraja man. So you're gonna just pull my cards for me, baby. Yeah. Okay. Pull so, my cards. <laughs> hey. -o. So, uh, Jose, since you have to go for a minute to read a story, what we'll do is maybe have you go first. What you'll do is you'll pick your uh, card, the thing that you want to know about. Um, what you're trying to imagine here is the queen is consulting with you and you are giving her an answer to this question. So imagine that, you sorry, know. Sorry, let me let me close some stuff on the screen so I can see. Okay. It's his dark glasses, everyone. He, he has a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Cam, what you'll do is you'll pick one of these six questions. They are, just in case people can't read them at home or you're on a podcast and there's no way you could read it. <laughs> what are Ray Fernando's true feelings about our marriage? And Ray Fernando is the, the king of Pelea here. Um, every wedding has at least one disaster. What will be mine? Is there anyone pulling Ray Fernando's strings for some ulterior purpose? If I go through with this wedding, what will happen to my true love? Who are my enemies here? <laughs> well, it, this is implied. So if you never answer this question, that might not be part of the story. So you get to decide whether that's going to be part of the story or not. Who are my enemies here in Espada who wish to derail this wedding? And can I serve both my country and my heart with this wedding? Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Everyone. And uh, who's scribe uh, for, for Cam? I'm just so that... a card, right? Uh, I'm just... Yeah, so that's right. Thank you for reminding me, Claire. We have our scribe mechanics still. So the person who goes um, right before in the line order. So uh, Mimi, if you will be so kind as to open your threat and La Reina's orders, which is where my marker is yes. right now. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Open it uh, and edit it. Um, right, sure. And uh, what you'll do is you'll basically write a version of what uh, Cam is saying. But I'm just, I'm just why is it asking card, me right? to drop a file? Uh, it shouldn't be. No, no, no. It, there's a text box under that. So fine. Good. Oh, okay. uh, wait, so there's also some text in it, though. Yeah, take a look at it for a second. Actually, I'll pull it up for the audience here as well. Um, so basically, this is just instructions to make it a little bit easier. Uh, it, all you really have to do, in fact, you know, for, for our purposes, we can just delete it. But uh, Eventually, what we're going to do is we're going to put orders in the second box. Uh, you're going to do things in the first box there, Mimi, where in this box here, just write down whatever uh, question Cam is answering, and then the answer right below it. Okay. And Cam, what you're doing is you choose a question, you have Carlos draw from the Baraja del Destino, and you interpret it as if the benefactors are giving you a vision that answers La Reina's questions. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so think of it less like 
um, here's what the truth is and more like, here's what I see, you know, here's what I hear or feel. Got it, so, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. Right. I am ready. So go uh, ahead. I pick, I pick the, uh, so you're going to pull a card or I pick. Well, uh, you pick one of these six first. Got it. Okay. Uh, well, hey, what are Ray Fernando's uh, true feelings about her, mar about our marriage? Our marriage. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, just put this on the front here, make it nice and big while we study it. And are you ready for your card? I am. Here are his I'm, I'm ready to write down. Yeah, so you write down the question, Mimi. Yeah, I've written it down. Wonderful. <laughs> so here's here's what Ray Fernando thinks. <laughs> Yikes. Read it for the podcast. There's... For the podcast, it's a card um, from the Ira suit, which is the most mercurial of the suits. And it says, there is no truth, only wagers. It has a sort of like image of justice with these double swords inverted. And on the one hand, someone faithful offering oblation. And on the other side, a thief robbing the, the very statue. I feel seen. <laughs> <laughs> very, very much seen in this card. Where was this card last week? <laughs> okay, so you want my interpretation of this vision that I have. Okay, uh, so uh, I suddenly get a vision. <laughs> and it is, uh, and it feels like it's, underwater because it's very difficult to see clearly and mm -hmm. everything is moving more slowly but it looks very much uh like there are uh green finned beings of enormous size uh wait and... um could you repeat that again it, sure. it almost green, seems comma mm -hmm. uh uh what did i say mm -hmm. next uh, finned beings of enormous size and two of them are laughing at the third who has rolled some pearls and i can't uh describe the i don't i don't know what the symbols on the pearls mean but they're glowing and kind of they're kind of hard to look at without um getting a headache but the one who threw those pearls looks very very angry as if he's been cheated and there's nothing he can do about it because cheating maybe is part of the game uh -huh, you drew the short pearl yeah <laughs> okay and uh i will say that there is something uh there there was some kind of um feature on on this on the one that lost which is i can't see it right now but i'm sure i'd recognize it if i saw it again um in the real world i'll stop there not exactly allaying brenda's fears are you <clears throat> um Uh-oh. Is she already cheating on him and they're not even married yet? <laughs> that sounds like him. dueling language. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's my saved. pearls before swine. I think my text has been saved and... Uh, uh -huh. Great. Oh, I, I see missed, it. Yep, it's there. I missed one word. Oh, sorry, where is this and Rina? No, it's, this is your, your threat and Larina's order. orders. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I missed one mm -hmm. word, which can can just put them back in Mash. because we put a question mark. Okay, good. Uh, who's doing what now? Excellent. So yeah, if uh, you'll just give us a, a quick recap, Mimi, of what you wrote down, just to make sure it's what Cam intended. Okay, uh, what are Ray Fernando's true feelings about our marriage? Um, I suddenly get a vision and it feels like it's underwater, hard to see clearly, and everything is moving slowly. It almost seems that there are green, and then I miss the word, something beings, green something beings. Uh, green guild beings. 
Green oh, grills. Oh, oh, like oh, they have Finn. I said Finn, but Finn. grills is better. <laughs> okay, green gills. So they have gills. They have green gills. Mm -hmm. Beings of enormous size. Two of them are laughing at the third who has rolled some pearls. And uh, they're glowing. There's some text on them, but hard to read. And they're also kind of hard to look at. Uh, the one who threw the pearls looks very, very angry as if he's been cheated. I'd say there was some kind of feature that I can't see right now, but I am sure I'll recognize it when it, when I see it in the real world. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Great. So, and Mimi I'm going slash to, uh, Melissa, it's your turn to uh, go, Mimi, and uh, Rodriguez the Fair is going to be the one who will serve as scribe. See. Okay. So you'll pick one of the five remaining questions. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh -huh. Who are my enemies here in Espada who wish to derail this wedding? Excellent, I'll just move it up here. Make it nice and big. So here we are. And Mimi, here is the card that's going to answer this question for you in the form of a mysterious vision. Little. So who are my enemies? Here they are. Oh, only a fool attends a masquerade unmasked. And what is this deck called? Oh, so yeah, the suit is called the Rayo. It's like natural forces, wild passions, uh, you know, sort of like nature unleashed, uh, you know, primal emotions, that sort of thing. So who are my enemies here in Espada who wish to derail this wedding? And it says only a fool attends a masquerade unmasked. So there's clearly a wedding masquerade, um, a ball dance kind of thing. And, yeah. uh, and, and everybody's masked in it, obviously, but I mean, some characters are not, but and 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 the arena doesn't get to be masked, right? Um, or or Fernando, and and yeah, and, and everybody else is masked in this dance, so you can't really tell. Who's there? This is my vision. This is the vision that I'm seeing, right? That's right. You don't even have to explain what the truth is. You just have to describe what you see because, you know, what you just said is that only the fools are unmasked and the no, Reina so I, and Ray so, Fernando okay, won't. Okay. Yeah. Let yeah. me rephrase it because I am the one who, I am one of the people unmasked and I am on the podium because right. I know right. that's the person I got to be, right? And I can see this ball dance happening. And, uh, and there's like the person who's doppelganger I am is somewhere else like in the dance, but I can't see them. And so, uh, God. Like, yeah, so, I mean, they are not attending the masquerade unmasked. So this is like the negative of that sentence. Like only a fool attends masquerade unmasked. So the arena is not attending it unmasked. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so her enemies there, um, do, do you see any enemies here in this card? I don't, but I also don't see the arena. So I, like there are certain sinister dance moves maybe happening on the floor. But I don't know who it, and I don't know if they know each other either. Got it. Got it. So Liam, whenever you're finished and ready, you'll just review that for us. Okay, I think I got it. Um, so the the setting is, is the wedding is now a ball dance. Um, the wedding is specifically a masquerade. Uh, Lorena doesn't get to be masked, or Fernando. But it is actually me in place of Reina. Reina is somewhere else, and I can't see them. Everyone else is masked, so you can't really tell who is there. 
sinister dances are happening on the dance floor, but I don't know who with or what they plan. Mimi, does that kind of cover it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Great. Sounds like there will be enemies at the wedding. Right. It's just like one way or another, you don't know who they are, but they're going to be there. Right. Even if the reina is not. So begs the question where she's going to be. So now, mm -hmm. um, Liam, it is your turn to pick a card and Claire will play scribe. Make sure that you've saved the document. I did. I just saved it. Excellent. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go with, is there anyone pulling Ray Fernando's strings for some ulterior purpose? All right. Make this nice some, and big here. Had some inspiration. Get this one out of the way. Put this a little higher. All right. And your inspiration card is... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Pain is the opposite of thought. <laughs> and that, that's one of them cards that's all about blood and and such like that, yeah? Uh, I mean, what was your first clue? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was thinking maybe that word thought. You know? <laughs> Bloody thoughts um yeah okay so let me know when my scribe is ready and then i'll start I'm all set. you're all set all right cool so rodriguez has a vision tonight before the wedding and uh it starts off with uh as if he is in the audience of some kind of puppet show and he's eating you know candied popcorn and he's having a lovely time and there's laughter in the air and there's just a general sense of merriment and then as if his his perception is a camera it zooms in towards the puppet show and it gets closer and closer and it would appear that all of the guests that he knows are coming to the masquerade ball are puppets and the specific one that is la reina um is getting tangled in her strings and more specifically the strings are wrapping around her neck and despite the fact that the puppet is made of wood it is beginning to bleed Ooh. and so he follows the strings upward running away from the blood that is also chasing him up the strings and as he gets closer to the top he realizes that all the strings are connected to some odd green and black orb that he's never seen before and that are covered in runes of some kind that he can't understand. And there's a general feeling of malevolence and anger and a sense of being cheated and making it right at whatever cost. And then it ends. So, you know, R Rodriguez, uh, he writes horror, just so you guys know. I do. That is my thing. <laughs> and cyberpunk, but, you know, it's, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Cyberpunk is pretty horror side of uh, science fiction. You know, right? it's it's getting harder to make it horror as people are just kind of living in a cyberpunk dystopia these days. Right, so, right. you know. Now it's really just good. memoir. <laughs> now, now it's just autobiography. Yeah. <clears throat> I will read what I have, but in case I miss anything, um, please tell me, Rodriguez the Fair. Uh, is there anyone pulling Ray Fernando's strings for some ulterior purpose? You pulled the Sangre card, pain is the opposite of thought. Rodriguez has a vision the night before the wedding. It starts off as if he's in the audience of some kind of puppet show. He's eating candied popcorn, having a lovely time, laughter in the air, general sense of merriment. Then, as if his perception is a camera, it zooms in toward the puppet show. And it appears that all the guests he knows that are coming to the masquerade ball are puppets. And the Lorena puppet is getting tangled in her strings, and the strings are wrapping around her neck. The wooden puppet starts to bleed. Um, running, I think Rodriguez is running away from the blood and chasing chasing up the strings mm -hmm. and as he gets closer to the top he realizes that all the strings are connected to some great green and black orb he's never seen the orb is covered in runes he can't understand and there's a general feeling of malevolence and anger and a sense of being cheated correct okay feel free to edit later 
man. Incredible job. All right. So Viana, you are uh, our cleanup batter here. Uh, which of the three remaining do you want to take? If I go through with this wedding, what will happen to my true love? All right. Let me make this nice and big. Move these other things out of the way. All right. And uh, Jose, you know your scribe on this, right? We can't hear you, Cam, darling. Yes, sorry. I'm going to the uh, to the, the site now. And this is Reina Resoluta. No, it's your threat and La Reina's orders. Got it. Okay. The your threat and box and one orders. Edit and moving on down. I think I'm in the right place. So. Uh, Okay, so ready. Excellent. Claire, here's your <laughs> card. It's a Lagrimas card. Oops. Lagrimas. Oh dear. Ah! That's... <laughs> They'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> If I go through this wedding, what will happen to my true love? Lorena asks me. And Vienna, a romantic, an archivist, a sub librarian, has a vision um, as she's pulled through this kind of green and black swirling. She thinks, is it snow? It's something cold and opaque. She's not sure. And she sees like limbs are they sticking out of this cold green and black opaqueness or are they being fed to it are they sinking in she looks to the hand which is wearing a ring of one of the high houses of espada in fact she recognizes this ring as belonging to la reina's main squeeze you know lorena goes through main squeezes but the current main squeeze is named then uh then vega and and it's as if he's being fed to or disappearing into the snow this opaque coldness he's definitely not alive anymore <laughs> and his hand is slowly disappearing. Awesome. I don't know, La Reina. I don't know. Does that mean anything to you? <laughs> <laughs> transcribing, La Reina for her, transcribing for her was a challenge. Okay. So uh, the question is, uh, what will happen to my true love if uh, I go through this wedding? Okay. The card to the un unremitting snow to the rest of it all history will be, got it okay all history will be lost to the unremitting snow as she's pulled through the green and black swirling she thinks uh is it snow she's not sure she sees limbs sticking out of the opaqueness or are they being fed to it she looks to the hand that is wearing a ring she recognizes this ring it belongs to her main squeeze event vega and it's as if he's being fed to or being pulled into the opaque coldness and his hand is disappearing and he's definitely not alive just when you say her main squeeze, it's La Reina's main squeeze, not the wizard having the vision, just to make it very clear. She's La Reina's. Yeah. Okay. Uh, La Reina is pulled, so she's pulled into it. So this is all no, about her. No, the, the hand of La Reina's lover is being pulled into it. So that's that's what I'm seeing. So I'm telling she oh, I thought, I'm sorry, I thought you were pulled into it while you were in it. You were seeing this. No? So well, I'm she... so La Reina's come to me. She's like, I have this question for you. You're a wizard. And I'm like, okay, ask me a question. And she says, If ah, I go through this wedding, what will happen to my true love? I have a vision from the benefactors. Boom. Boom. This is what I see. I see Lorena's lover being pulled into something I don't understand, but I think Lorena understands it, right? I'm not privy to the pearl thing. 
boom okay. that's what i okay. see so i don't understand the vision i'm having but it's for lorena so lorena thinks so lorena thinks it's snow she's not sure she sees limbs all that is i'm her. having right. my character my character is having a vision okay. in response to lorena's question I don't, uh, am I not, I can, Carlos, can you say it in a better way? I'm, I think I'm not explaining oh, 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 it uh, well. Oh, I, I get it. Just, it's when they say you, I'm sorry, your character's name is again. Viana. Thank you. Uh, Viana is pulled through. Viana sees. It's like she's having a dream, but she's having a dream for La Reina to answer La Reina's question and about La Reina's wedding. Someone else being pulled into the snow that is not her. So, okay, so she just sees all this. She is not being pulled through. That's right. I, okay, yeah. correct. Okay. Sorry, my understanding was that whoever is having this vision is kind of experiencing this vision, and she was pulled into this place to kind of see this stuff. So the vision was this black darkness. Okay. I just, yeah, I just want to make sure this. She's like observing the dream. She's not part of it. The person being yeah. pulled in is Lorena's lover. You know, okay. like that's that's what she sees. Sorry, so, I think I just confused it. Um, I have a question. So, uh, so each of our characters is seeing this vision, right? Uh, is it mandatory that Larina hears about them? Or... Yes. So we all go and tell. You... Yeah, she knows because what's going to happen now is that we're going to turn these visions into her orders. So you reported what your visions were, and you're going to turn those into Larina saying, "Okay, here's what I want you to do about it." She's the one asking the questions. She came to us because we are her wizards. And she says, here's my question. You're my wizards. Answer this for me. And that's why we're having oh, the visions yeah. to begin with. I think maybe we like scooted over that a little bit. But so now that she has a sense of how to interpret our visions, she's going to give us orders based on our visions to, to do something about it. OK. I'm going to edit this. Well, it belongs to in the museum, please. Then Vega, <laughs> and it's as if he's being fed to and being pulled to the opaque coldness. Ah, his hand is disappearing. And he's definitely not alive. Okay, I got it, and you will see it in a moment. Uh, Lorena, uh, L E R L A R E N A. No, oh, never mind. I see it. Okay, and saving changes. You'll see that? Well, so please, uh, can you review it yep. for us, Cam? For the... uh, let's see, she sees a green and black, and by a she, uh, uh, Ven, a Vera, uh, 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 Claire's character, uh, she thinks it is snow, she's not sure. She sees limbs sticking out of the opaqueness, or are they being fed to it? There's a hand that is wearing a ring. Lorena recognizes this ring and belongs to her main squeeze, then Vega, and it's as if he's being fed to or being pulled into the opaque coldness and his hand is disappearing. And he's definitely not alive. He's definitely dead. Um, is dead, excuse me, let me edit that. Cool. Yeah, that's that's fine. And then Cam, I see that it's at, like in the below part where the orders are supposed to be. Could you could you copy paste, scoop it up to the um the box above and like put it beneath the, the last question? Oh, I put it. Is there anyone question? Question. If I go through with this wedding. Okay. Okay, you see it? Have a look. I'm going to look right now. Oh, oh, sorry. And he definitely is dead. He is dead. Super dead. Excellent. Yes. Looks like it's all in the right place. Okay. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll do the last part of this uh, portion of the game. We'll take a little break after that. Just give people uh, a chance to stretch and grab a drink. And then what we'll do is we will role play the sucker out. So here's the last thing that we're going to do here. Right now, you've all reported visions to La Reina about her wedding. Uh, as you can imagine, she's fairly disturbed, <laughs> given this, you know, litany of horrors that you've put in front of her. So she wants something done about it, 
and you're her wizards. So you're going to make this right. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take the order that you, I'm sorry, the, the vision that you presented and imagine what La Reina is going to ask you to do about it. So you're going to turn this vision into something actionable that La Reina is going to do basically to get you to not let the terrible thing happen that you <laughs> discovered in your vision. So, you know, uh, now that we know about Rey Fernando's true feelings, what do we want to do about that? She's going to give you one sentence. So each of you is going to take the order that you wrote and in one sentence, write down what La Reina wants you to do about it. The most important rule to writing this sentence is that you're not allowed to use the word and. <laughs> This is very important. Okay. Lots of play testing. Yeah. You cannot use the word and because the word and adds orders. You basically start creating a list of orders inside of an order. One order per order is all that's allowed. So when you create your order and you write it, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to basically write down the order in a way so that it's a clear sentence, you know? You don't want it to be full of dependent clauses and things that make it uh, hard to understand. This is gonna be her clear and direct sense of like what you need to accomplish uh, to make sure that her wedding goes off without a hitch. So take a moment and review the text that uh, your scribe wrote down for you about your uh, vision. Uh, what we'll do, maybe what we'll do now is we'll just take a break and maybe just like on a side piece of paper, uh, just try to write your order in one sentence and we can, you know, we'll workshop it as we uh, come back together and we'll have you all write down your, uh, your one sentence that will go. So what we'll do is we'll pause for, so, let's say 10 minutes. Uh, so I, I, have, I have a question again. So um, when I was making up my um, vision i i, I kind of i wasn't really being very coherent so and i'm like rethinking like it's the same vision i'm, I'm just trying to smoothen it out so can i rewrite my section so if you rewrite it you'll just have to read it again to everybody and then uh you'll still end up with an order that is actionable so absolutely yeah we'll, we'll just sure, 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 sure. I, people... I, I, I will also just get something to eat and right so we'll pause, you know, take a, a couple minutes to stretch and stuff, take a couple minutes to write down your, uh, your uh, order as well. And we'll reconvene in like 10 minutes, okay? See you at 8.45. That's why I got into the circuit. <laughs> Thank you, Damn dear no audience, for staying with us. Yes, welcome back, everybody. So. Uh, what we're going to do for this next part of the game, you know, we would just spend some time having some visions that we were sharing with La Reina and, of course, each other. Uh, we're going to turn these into orders. What you have to imagine now is that you are basically being La Reina for a second and being like, okay, this vision sucks. I don't want this to happen. You, wizard, here's what you're going to do about it. So each of you is writing one sentence that's an order from La Reina, how she wants you to fix it. You know, now that she's heard your vision, what are you going to do about it? And um, sorry. Oh, just want to remind <laughs> people, uh, when you write these sentences, you cannot use the word and. And is a trap. Also is also a trap, but you can't normally write that in a complete sentence. So it's just, just one grammatical complete sentence. I also recommend that you take it easy on the dependent clauses. Uh, don't pile them up. Uh, try not to create a listicle out of your order. Uh, you know, you, this is basically going to be the mechanic that will determine success or failure. So clear, precise orders, clearly stated in one sentence are the thing that we're looking for. Mimi, you had a question. Um, because I had rewritten my order, you uh, rewritten my vision, you wanted me to read it again. What we'll do is we'll do it, you know, when it comes time for you to read your vision again, uh, it will do your vision and your order right back to back okay, just so okay, that okay. people can really hear them well. I was thinking this time we'd start with Viana though, uh, and we could hear how you changed your vision into uh, an order, just to give a good example for the folks. Sure. Um, so let me just, um, that's my order. I'm just going to write it down. Um, the question was, what will happen to my true love if I go through the wedding? And sounded like something terrible might be happening to her main squeeze, Ven Vega. So the queen's order to me is, 
escort Van Vega to the monks on the Isle of Perla, where he will be safe on the day of my wedding. <laughs> okay. Nothing could happen to him with those nice monks. <laughs> he'll so be different. safe, right? Right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen so that you can kind of see uh, where Claire has put this. Uh, just so that we're all on the same page. So Claire, you've already written this in the order, correct? In the, uh, on the... Yes, actually, let me just say um, uh, blah, 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 a really quick order for Viana. So that, that we is, uh, so that we know it's me. I'm saving changes, I've, I'm closing out, okay. Okay, great, you saved it. I'm gonna go ahead and go in and edit just so that <clears> you can see. Um, uh, this is where you're going to do your magic work here, folks. So inside of this box, uh, right here. I don't know why it's in black. So I'm just going to quickly change the text color to white there. I don't know what's happening there. Um, Mine is white. Yeah, when we look at it, it's black on white, not white on black, but. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe I'll undo that. Okay, so I'll just cancel my changes there. But this is where you're going to put it in. So uh, you'll write so down. Orders, orders go below. Like That's right. Below. Yeah, there's that dividing line. So orders uh -huh. will go below. So it's very easy to see this. This is going to be very important uh, for the next part of the game. So uh, the next person that we have up, though, is Cam. Cam, uh, are you ready to write your order in uh, right am. below Claire's? I am. And All right. just scroll on down. And the order. From Vienna, and I'll I'll write the, I'll write that in the the question afterwards. Uh, is learn how to win this game. And huh. the I'll go back to the visions and recall. I suddenly got a vision, and it felt like it was underwater, hard to see clearly, and everything is moving slowly. Uh, but anyway, basically, it sounds like there are these monstrous things which are playing a game. There's three of them, and one of them seems like he lost and was cheated, and that should feel like it's going to be a problem for uh, Ray Fernando and mm -hmm. the, and the love and and her love, uh, love of her life. Oh, and wow. so her uh, her goal is to learn how to win this game. Mm -hmm. See, I thought they were throwing um, divinatory bones kind of thing i thought they were trying to see the future it's a game okay very interesting Poor All right. the players ah! yeah exactly this is gonna be like a whole weird little subplot to work out here awesome so uh let us know when you've uh, written that in cam and have saved yeah. submarine plot yeah <laughs> okay side quest i'm all done all right, I see it there. We are good. All right. So now, Mimi, go ahead and read your vision as you've revised it, and then give us your order. Well, wait. Um, so in my vision, I'm at the wedding itself, standing on the royal podium next to Ray Fernando in the Reina's stead, as we had already decided. Uh, bracket. The wedding is of the Reina, though. She merely doesn't want to stand in for it, as usual. Mm. We are looking down upon the masked ball dance where all the luminaries of the city are participating. I know the Reina is among them somewhere, but, but I don't know which one she is. And in this vision, I get a foreboding that some of her worst enemies are at the dance, enemies that she may not survive, but I don't know which ones among the sinister dancers they are either. Great, wonderful. So what's the order? So my order, uh, and then I have to, I mean, my screen is so weird. Like I, I'm getting overlapped. Like this screen is getting overlapped by uh, like all of our pictures and it's very hard for me to. Oh, so okay. you can hide the oh. pictures. Yeah, if you, if you go to this dial over here, this little gear, uh, you can mm -hmm. decide uh, how much of those show. Okay. So um, order for, uh, um, God, this looks like an end sentence. So it, it is that she says, I shall torture myself through the wedding then while you transform to Ven Vega for the masquerade. Oh, okay. 
So you're, she's ordering you to be then Vega during the masquerade. Yes, yes. And, okay. and she's like, she will suffer the wedding. Right. <laughs> That's so, so great. Yeah, it's, it's a great idea. I guess the, the thing is like, how do you know if you've accomplished the mission? Like wh what, what is the result that she's looking for there? She's looking for safety for herself because the vision was that it's, it's unsafe for her. Uh, the arena but she's also trying to keep whoever because she's she's gotten all these visions right so she has information about all these visions and she's you know asked to take Ven Vega somewhere else but she's also trying to keep the uh, enemies busy by thinking that Ven Vega is right here got it okay so to me what that sounds like is that to keep me safe take the form of Ven Vega and you know, don't use and, but, you know, to lure away my enemies or something like that. Um, but you don't have to rewrite it that way. I just was trying to clarify, like, what's the end game here? And the end game mm -hmm. is to keep her safe and to lure enemies toward Ven Vega. Great. Right, right. She's so mean to you, man. <laughs> I know. It's just like, she uses you hard. <laughs> like, here's another day, another time to put you, your life in danger for me. Like, every day. Um, Rodriguez. What order did you come up with? The, so my vision <clears throat> was that he was at a, a, essentially a puppet show version of the wedding. And then he saw strings choking the Lorena uh, puppet until they were bleeding. And then the blood chased his perspective up the strings to some kind of black green pearl with writing on it. So mm -hmm. having heard this, uh, Lorena tells him, well, I need you to reveal to me the one holding the strings from your vision in secret. Reveal who's holding the strings. Fantastic. That, those are four good, clear orders that we're going to use to move on to the role play part of Negocios en Fednales. So awesome job, everybody. We are now going to go ahead and move on over to questing. So, um, I had this listed as Claire Lowe's because I didn't know who among us was going to play, but <laughs> Claire. Um, this is because we are one being in hambre. That's right. That is right indeed. Um, okay. So, friends, the way that the game works at this point is we're going to have to accomplish those four orders in scenes by role playing them out. The way that it's going to work is we're going to establish the scene together. We're going to do a round robin where everybody <clears throat> contributes some uh, description and some detail to the setting of where the scene is going to take place. So each scene will need a protagonist. The protagonist is going to be the person who initially is going to try to resolve the scene. So you'll take the order that you just uh, talked about and you're gonna try to make that happen. So you get to decide like when in the timeline things are happening. You might say like, oh, okay, maybe it makes sense for us to try to figure out what the game is first and see how that might connect to the wedding. Or maybe you decide, oh, let's do that later. First, we need to do it. So you'll, as a group, sort of decide who's gonna be the first protagonist. Everybody has to, as a protagonist, successfully accomplish an order. Now. Things might go awry in your scene and you might not be able to accomplish the order you set out to accomplish. That's fine. It's just that if somebody else accomplishes your order, you'll still be on the hook for being the protagonist who solves one of the four problems. Once you do that, you'll eliminate the protagonist card that's under your name here. Uh, and then uh, there are a couple of other things that you'll uh, need to do. Um, everybody has to play an NPC at least once. You can create an NPC whole hog, and we'll, as we come to that, uh, I'll, I'll show us how to do that. It's very quick and easy. Um, or we might use someone who's already established. We already have two that are formally established. We have Reina Resoluta and we have Marinel, who are, both have been pretty fleshed out as characters. We also have the name Ven Vega that's been dropped a few times. So I've gone ahead and put a name in an NPC card for Ven Vega, just in case we want to use that uh, character later. But we still have to create Ven Vega, and we'll go through that process uh, as we need to. Everybody has to play uh, an NPC at least once. And everybody has to successfully 
use their magic at least once. So some point in the scene, the protagonist will try to use their magic. If the protagonist successfully uses their magic in scene, great, you solve the problem. You can also solve the problem just by using your wits. You can just like come up with a logical solution that works as well. Don't have to use your magic to solve the problem. However, you don't get to take off your magic card for that. Other characters in the scene can also use their magic to supplement or help the protagonist. They don't get to resolve the scene, but they do get to take off their magic card. So you can use your magic whenever you think it's appropriate for you to try to use the magic to advance the plot, to get what your characters are after. Um, so everybody has to use um, uh, their magic. They have to play an NPC and they have to successfully complete one of the four orders as the protagonist. Every time you accomplish an order, an order token gets removed from the sword. Once all four of these are gone, we'll move into the denouement and then uh, we'll move into the final part of the game. However, <clears throat> Oh, uh, Rodriguez has raised a hand. Yes, Rodriguez, how can I help you? Look at me using tools to, to get things done. Um, so from what it sounds like, are we able to play each other's characters, essentially, is, is what I'm hearing? Not each other's characters, but you can play each other. Uh, you can play any NPCs that everybody has. OK, so, all, right, all right. So basically, only uh, you will play Rodriguez, but anybody can play the queen. OK, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And yeah, if, yeah or, and if you, or any other NPC. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Claire. Right, like so. When when you're the protagonist, it's whatever you need, and we're trying to be your supporting cast, both as our player characters and any NPC. If you're like Rodriguez, has to go see the queen. One of us will be like, I'll be the queen this time, and then we get to take the NPC card off. I'll be the queen. No, I'll be the queen. I'll be the queen. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yeah. Um, so every time. An order is accomplished by a protagonist, either through their wits or their magic. Order gets removed, four of these go, you win. Every time the protagonist fails at a wits check or a magic check, the queen moves down the sword. If ever the queen is buried up to the hilt, it's Coitons, folks. This is a total party loss. You get to decide what loss looks like in the scenario, depending on where you are in the story. But you know, murder is definitely in the cards. <laughs> you know, it can definitely be like an, a TPK if that's the way that you want to tell the story. Uh, so, you know, what you're trying to do is remove all the orders before you get the queen all the way down here. But let me just add a little wrinkle here. Let's say you're on the danger spot here, right before you're about to lose the game. And, you know, whoever's the protagonist fails a check. Normally, that would move you onto the hilt of the sword and that would be coitons for you. However, you have an option to forestall the total loss of the game. Any one of the characters can immediately make their doom a reality. So basically the way that you do that is you remove the doom card from your uh, uh, stack of cards that you have here. So everybody has uh, the different cards that they have, uh, you know, here and here and here. Uh, so you, you know, let's say, um, uh, Mimi, it was time uh, to activate your doom to save the game. Whichever these four cards is there, you would actually put it on the board so that I could uh, remove it and then uh, activate your doom, actively describing how the terrible, horrible thing that you hoped never would happen is happening in the scene that you're in right now. So it happens immediately and it happens right in front of you. So uh, it becomes part of the scene, basically your doom, and you, you have to carry that doom with you for the rest of the game. But doink, you get to move that back there and you get to have somebody else try to uh, continue to be the uh, protagonist and solve the uh, problem of the scene right there. The doom um, can't kill you and take you out of the game. You have to live with your doom and it has to affect gameplay. Uh, like oh. once, once the game is lost, People can die, but until the game is lost, you have to stay alive with your doom and suffer. Oh, that's a new wrinkle. I feel like that was not there. <laughs> no, 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 it was there. Oh, okay, you have to like live with your doom unless we get here. If we eventually get here, oh, okay. then everybody can die. Okay, that's what, that's what happened. Oh, so can the last to. one for the doom, because yeah. 
Him being eaten the entire game is going to get awkward fast. It's going to be so great. That sort of thing has happened before, and it's hilarious. I think to Cam, in fact. I'm actually kind of hoping. <laughs> but does Cam always have edible characters? I mean, I think it's a thing. Yeah. It might be his sort of like no. sexy mouse, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, Anthropomorphism, yeah. So one other thing. Um, <laughs> when uh, you fail a check, a complication takes the board, which means basically there's a new problem. So like, instead of the success that you were hoping for, a complication happens. A complication needs to be resolved also by wits or by magic before you can actually get to trying to remove one of the orders. So you get a little blockade in front of you once uh, you fail a check. Uh, once you use your magic or your wits to remove this complication, like you know, if soldiers suddenly enter the building and you don't want them there, whatever, whatever it is, uh, then we just remove the complication and we go back to trying to uh, the main scene, trying to remove the order, uh, accomplish the order that you'd want it. So here's what happens, like if, if like I'm the protagonist of a scene, I fail my check, a complication arises, I can't be the one to try to solve that complication. All y'all, you have to solve that complication for me because we gotta call I've just allies. failed, I believe. Yeah. Is that, okay. that was the rule, right, Carlos? Yeah, that's right. Somebody else needs to try to do it. Unless the game is just at a point where it won't work. You know, it might be that like there's one order left and only one person can accomplish it. If if we've reached that point, then uh, there, there are no more uh, complications to be had. Also, you can't get any more complications once you're on the danger. It's only like when you're on care, then you have a complication. Caution, you have a complication. But once you're here, you're you're just in danger so it's no more complications you're just trying to avoid doing that it's complicated <laughs> enough trying to stay alive stay alive stay alive <laughs> all right do we think we uh have the basics down and can kind of begin to decide who's going to be the first protagonist x yeah let's do it all right friend oh, I found a fake. speak amongst yourselves and decide Whose order you're going to try to accomplish first? Right. Let's take I wanted to. I wanted to just say, do we have a? Is the wedding tomorrow? Like, do we have a like when the wedding's happening? Is that we can work backwards from there? Hmm. Decide. Because, like my character, I have to escort Ven Vega, but we, that could be as simple as take him to the docks, take the ferry across to Perla. That could be just a matter of hours. It could happen day of. So, but I think it has to happen before the wedding. Yeah. Um, and some things happen. Mine is at the wedding. So is yours at the wedding. So I'm definitely yeah. before you. It's the last one, probably. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, like maybe like the night before the wedding. Yeah. That's so intention. the night before the wedding is when I will do my thing. H learn how to play the game. Cam, do you think you want to do that? Like before the wedding, morning of, at the wedding? Do you have an idea when you want to oh, start? Oh, I think, I mean, I, I hopefully we can learn that before the wedding. I mean, it's it, it makes more sense, obviously, for most of these to happen before the wedding, but just as far as story tension goes, <laughs> it'll, it'll, be, it'll be more interesting to have to do that during the wedding. So, mm -hmm. but, your, but yours would be first though, right? I'm getting this sense. I'm, uh, uh, Liam, remind me of your... So mine is, I'm, I'm supposed to be bringing whoever it is that's holding the strings from my vision to her in secret, like reveal who it is to her in secret. So that's like that, like Cam is an investigative. You'll right. be doing that between now and the wedding. So Mimi, we know, is probably last and I'm probably first. And then the investigation is mm -hmm. going to be happening between Perla and Espada at some well, point. Well, and a, a thing that could affect whether or not the investigating happens during the wedding. I like Cam's idea of it being during the wedding because it is more storytelling tension. But if all of the guests are have already arrived sometime before the wedding, mm. um. You know, we could be doing it before the wedding as well, but yeah, I like Cam's idea, so I'm kind of like discounting my own opinion. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I guess the, I mean, just I think it would just make sense as far as the uh, security if all the guests are actually already there, just so they mm. can be vetted before the queen goes anywhere close to them. Um, so it could be. I still think it'll, it'll make more sense to do it the day, like the night before. Okay. Um, uh, which one do you think would take more more time? I guess what we'll, I want to know. These two. Because I think it's so just a question of what. Uh, uh, yeah, because both of ours are basically investigations, you know? 
it's interesting. It's like if if you know who is playing the game, which is sort of Liam's thing, then you can learn right. how to play. Right. Then the we game. can learn how to play. Yeah, mm. I yeah. agree. So I okay. think mine would be first. Yeah. Got it. So if we, so maybe I'll 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 have, I'll ask my fellow wizards to accompany me, to to Perla, because we're gonna go with Ven Vega and we'll come back with Ven Vega, which would be Mimi's character. That <laughs> was one thing I was gonna ask. Do we know Dude, each other are nice. wizards? We each. Yeah. Do we know that each other are wizards? Yes. I, yeah. The 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 in canon or like in the rule book, you would see that. All the wizards in La Reina's court are aware of each other because we're her secret wizards. We're like her secret. We're like her secret spies, basically. You're the spy master, so maybe, like, maybe in a sense, we report to you before we report to La Reina. Oh, that but, could work. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, I mean, either that, or you know, we didn't need to know about each other until this really big problem came up, and now she, like things have gone wrong. So now she's had to pull the wizards in. <laughs> like I've been going around being like, "Tell me your." deepest darkest secret and you immediately like i'm a wizard <laughs> yeah, i mean uh, if Suddenly, you don't do Esposita that then, like, not, i like books and i cannot lie relationship with mine doesn't work right right well, yeah, like, i mean that immediately and yeah. have to know and then cam and i have to know because of our mutual interests so, like okay I feel like we've i know had some encounters before yeah, yeah i see how this goes down yeah i i i'm going around i'm asking people i'm like and I go to Jose. I'm like, tell me your deepest secret. And he's like, I'm a wizard. And I'm like, do you know any you other too? wizards? And he's like, do I? And, then, <laughs> so like, and I'm like, okay, well, bring me all the other wizards and we're going to have a chat. And then as Posita shows up, I'm like, her? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? She's so uninteresting. And then, yeah, that all. No, well, first you asked me. My, dark, my, my first darkest too. secret was... was uh, I like light beer, and then yeah. What's your second uh, favorite? Right. The second darkest secret. Which is second darkest secret. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I had to go down the and line. Then you, you say her. She's yeah. uninteresting, and I, I just say, well, you stink, and then I turn into you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's like, ooh. <laughs> Shit. It's all the garlic, is isn't it? It's the garlic. Yeah. <laughs> so when a protagonist is first establishing a scene, I'll say like a line about where we are. It's so it's so like a description of a place, but then we each go in our order and just add like it's a yes and we add one more line of description until we've kind of created a an atmosphere around us. Um, is that a good place to start, Carlos? Uh, it is. Uh, let me just be a little bit clearer for the folks at home. Sure. What we do uh, before each uh, new scene that takes place. So even if a scene changes in uh, in the midst of an order or something, we'll go around and whoever's the protagonist begins by setting the scene. Uh, they establish what they need to establish in the scene. Then we'll go around and turn order. So that will be Jose Melitza Rodriguez. Uh, and each of you will add something to the scene. It could be a description that has to do with the outside scene itself. It could be something about what your character is doing or feeling. It could be a plot point that, you know, maybe is something that's happening in the wings that characters might not be aware of. Remember, as you all uh, are players, you have more information than your characters do. So feel free to, you know, introduce things of dramatic irony that you know, but your characters do not. So um, if we're ready, yeah, Claire, uh, start setting the scene. And I just wanted to remind all of you that if you ever feel like you're stuck or you can't think or you're feeling pressure at any time, you can draw a card from the Barraja del Destino to inspire you. It doesn't have to be other anything other than just for fun you know um but when you're making a decision when you're going to use your wits or your magic to try to solve your order we draw a card and we check it against the four cards of our character sheet motivation magic doom and roll in court if the if the border matches then then it go then we succeed magic or the wits go our way and if it doesn't match that's the failure and that's and then we deal with it narratively in that sense Got it. Okay. So, so Ven Viana is at the docks waiting for the ferry to Perla with Ven Vega and my co wizards. Ven Vega has no idea that we're wizards. Ven Vega is like 
why is an archivist a jester the the queen's doppelganger and um and a thug uh, and a thug <laughs> and, the, and the book burner escorting me to parallel like and why am i even going to parallel and vague is a little haughty and like awkward and like really on his like on his dignity right now um it's early the dawn before um it's the day before the reina's wedding it's dawn there's a light mist okay uh as i put in the text holden if you're there do you want to pull uh a card for me and then give a little bit of uh of uh, inspiration here for me to uh for me to improv off of how do i pull a card so yeah, Holden, if you cool. want to pull a card, basically what I'll do is I'll put it here, but what you can do is sort of like tell uh, Cam what kind of inspiration he should take from it to help describe the scene. Sorry, so what, what am I saying exactly? So uh, Cam is just about to add to the scene that Claire uh, added. I just drew this card for you. Can you make it a little bigger? Yeah. Ah. Oh. So just feel free to just like brainstorm a little, Holden. Like, what does this card make you think of? And Cam will turn that into an answer. Um. So this looks like a ship that's run aground. Hmm. Are you still thinking, or should I go with that? Um, Take your time. I got rum. <laughs> For those of you, yeah. So maybe rum, maybe the problem. setting. There's something about the setting where there's there's a rocky beach. Gotcha. And there are some shipwrecks or other things that have I got you. There. I got you. Okay. So my character, while I've been called here by the queen, and I'm, you know, the, the I'm looking, well, I'm a little nervous, quite frankly, uh, and for, for two reasons. Uh, one, that there is an area of the city which is on the water, and it is, these are essentially, they're, they're, they're ships from a that have that have been broken, smashed against the, the against the rocks of the island from a an attack from a, a neighboring neighboring country from years ago that have just been left there. Oh dear! And the baby is crying. So, so I'll make this quick. Um, they've been left there as a as a, a warning to other nations, but also part of the of Negotius's black market is there. Whenever we have foreign dignitaries come, it just kind of floods with with new things being brought over to be borrowed or stolen or taken it's like a, an underground market just kind of floods over there that's where they go and he's supposed, to, he's supposed to be on duty you know going to this place and making sure that you know anything that is found there is not of you know magical evil whatever that should be taken off out, out of circulation but also he's kind of jonesing for it because he knows that there's going to be stuff there should be taken out of circulation so his, 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 his concentration is a little bit split he knows he's got to do something for the queen but there's something going on over here and i'm gonna walk away to go deal with my dog check check um Okay, Melitza, what do you want to add to the scene? Oh my God. Okay. Can I can I think about it while Liam goes? You can always pull a card too. Right, oh, but okay. I was having trouble hearing you too. So. Okay, so um, I, I I said, can I think about it while Liam goes before? Yeah, I don't mind. And I pull a card. Sure. Do you want me to pull a card now? Well, we'll let Liam go, and then then we'll pull a card for if you'd like. Sure. Um, so we're adding to the scene in general, as in what's here, what are we seeing, what's going on, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a relatively calm uh, sea tonight. 
um, there's not huge crashing waves unless it was already said that there were huge crashing waves and mm -hmm. can't remember now. Okay, yeah. So it's it's relatively calm, which is a good time to go make a journey, a perilous journey across the water to another island. Um, but uh, what does seem to be perilous as we are preparing the the boat to go across is that Rodriguez notices that buried up to its uh, first segmented part in the sand is what looks to be a very large crab claw mm. around the size of what you would normally consider to be a like a wheelbarrow. It's about <laughs> wheelbarrow sized. Whoa! And it look and it smells awful when we get near it. So it's clearly deceased. Wow. That there's a huge crab claw sticking out of the sand. Terrific. Uh, are, are we on Perla? We're on the docks of Espada and we're about to um, enter a ferry that will take us just across maybe like a half hour, 45 minute ferry ride to Perla. Right. Yeah, so I guess so, it'll be like kind of off the docks on the sand. There's a yeah. crab claw. So, so we're, we're discovering all these new things on the docks themselves. Yeah, as we're waiting for the ferry to arrive to to escort Van Vega, this is just we're just like kind of fleshing out the scene. We're just looking around, looking at our characters, like kind of just giving little just little hints of what's around. Okay, um, can I can I have a card now? Yes, your card is being made big in the center of the screen right now. Oh my God, what is that? Yeesh. In the card says, "In your house, make mice fear you." That's no, that's, and then that's fair. There's a cat catching a mouse, and then there's a person catching catching the cat, and then there's the hand of death catching the person. I think, like, interesting. Okay. I mean, one of the things that. Uh, Melissa is already going through is that um, this guy, Van Vega, right? Uh, can I add to Van Vega? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll write uh, down whatever you say, actually. Let me open that up and I'll be your scribe. Oh, okay. So uh, Van Vega is like a minor nobleman or somebody in the, in the, at the court. And like, I'm, I'm, totally pulling like the Dudley, Robert Dudley person. And uh, uh, so Robert Dudley apparently had really good calves. Like that was his thing. Huh. His, yeah, Robert Dudley's calves are the thing. And then like, because they used to wear those singlet or something, doublet, whatever. You Like you could display your calves. Anyway, so maybe Van Vega has really nice calves. Um, anyway, Cannon. so he, yeah has been ordered by the arena to go there, right? And he's like a little bitter about it because he's clearly the lover and she's getting married to somebody else, which is like a complete marriage of uh, convenience. But like, um, he, he's, he's a little wounded, like at least at his pride, if not at his heart, but probably at his heart as well. And, uh, and he's like a little annoyed at the decoy queen at this moment. <laughs> because like it's the decoy queen who has like come to take her to this place among with all these other people. Right. So and and uh the thing is and he had never really once again paid a lot of attention to this person's personality. And, and he's beginning to wonder. I mean, I, I don't even know if I'm using the card very much, but um, like it was, in, it was on his mind why these three characters are going to take her, take him somewhere, right? And he was almost, uh, almost a little insulted that maybe none of the more appropriate people, military generals or whatever are available because everybody's like at the wedding, you know, preparations and somehow he's been given like 
<laughs> the excess people, right? And uh, because the decoy queen is there, who is probably really not necessary and who might be more necessary at the wedding itself, because he knows that the queen uses the decoy a lot, right? Like whenever she doesn't want to do something, the queen uses the decoy. And he starts getting a suspicion that something may be afoot. Like he's not only being taken elsewhere to not be annoying at the wedding or something. Yeah, or he's getting the Anne Boleyn. Like, you know, that's what I'd be scared of, you know, Frenchman sword to the neck. That's great, Mimi. Uh, and I think you used the card very well because, you know, it's like he's feeling annoyed and maybe a little helpless. So maybe he's feel he wants to be like the hand that's reaching out, but he's like that little mouse that's being chased right now. Like, I think you used the card really well in terms of that. Great. Um, and Did your voice get a little low lower? I think. I yeah, the volume got a little lower somehow. I don't know where. I don't know why. Mine lower? Yes. 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 Oh, I wonder what happened. Um, see if that helps a little bit. I don't know. I'll try to get a little bit closer to the mic. Uh, no, it sounds like your mic cut out completely. Like we can only hear you through your computer, the computer mic. Oh. Maybe um, a plug got bumped or something. Yeah, I'll take a look in a second. But at this point, uh, Claire, since you're the protagonist, I'm going to ask. Oh, now it's completely out. Super silent, went silent. Um, Mimi, I just want you to check out the calves on the Ven Vega, <laughs> the Ven Vega NPC card now, because I found Robert Dudley's calves and basically that NPC card is only calves right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want you to oh, know. Oh, snap. That's yeah. for you, man. <laughs> calves and thighs, calves and thighs. Yeah. Um, like she was clearly the cooler Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> um, where, where? Very are you? I can hear you faintly. Yeah, very faintly. I'm gonna try to fix my microphone. And not um, at all now. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 in high school we had to study the Tudor period at death. Like that's what they chose to teach us for, like. So I, I had like six semesters of the Tudor period. Oh man. No, wow. Five semesters, five papers of the Tudor period and one paper of uh, post-revolution France, which I knew nothing about. But so, yeah, so we had like plenty of time to like, you know, ponder over everybody's beauty, their calves and like, you <laughs> know, who was flirting with whom and for what reason what was attractive about each person <laughs> it was really fun like I had not studied history like that before that like we were reading history like gossip that's so great so, that's pretty sweet actually it's like you know this person was set off from this place and was supposed to get to that place in three days but did not get there where did he go like, who is he having an affair with? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's take all of that knowledge and then just change the names for our game. Carlos is going to change the batteries on his mic, but we're going to just keep going um, because it's already 934. Um, so my job to fulfill my order is to escort Ven Vega safely. Now we know a lot about Ven Vega, his calves, his attitudes. It seems like Jose Diaz has left our little party to go to the black market area to search for forbidden tomes. Um, Jose, are you going to not accompany us then to Parallel? Are you going to kind of stay here or you want to rejoin us as the ferry comes? Uh, I am going to say that my character has been called away on other duties. Okay. That. Uh, that, that I'm supposed to be with my crew, you know, my team, you know, Going through the the going to going to the the broken city of ships, which will be called something in Spanish, which I will look up. All right. So, uh, Jose, we will see you at the wedding then. Yeah, sure. You see me at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, please, Ven Vega. Uh, the ferry has arrived. We are just an hour away from our destination and uh la reina has requested that we accompany you to the monks um please do not 
leave the ferry at any time. Please do not attempt to leave the island at any time before the wedding is complete, at which point you'll be invited back to the Espadan mainland. But for now, make like a monk and anchor. Uh Does anybody want to play my Ven Vega for me? They can knock the NPC card off their... Well, oh, sure. if, if Jose's not there, let's have yeah, Jose. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. Hold on a second. Let me just uh, put him in time. This is the name of the city, I guess. The real so, ships. Pomlesto de Fracasto. After Pomlesto. you start rattling off orders to him, um, Rodriguez um, chuckles and says, uh, Madam, if you wouldn't mind one more time. And then he turns to uh, Vivi and using his magic says, Follow all of this lady's orders exactly. Well, I I'm delighted. Not a, I, yeah. I, I'm, delighted. Not a, I'm, I'm not a chef, so <laughs> I don't cook to order. Except, all right, but so you're using <laughs> magic. So <laughs> you'll be drawing a, a card from. Sure. Oh, now here's Carlos. Oh, Carlos will be drawing an, a card <laughs> for you. And if it works, then I'll repeat my orders, and you're just gonna have to do it, Ven Vega, no matter what. Oh, <laughs> well, I'll have my to. I, I, I guess. I, I guess it depends. I, I, I'll have to do what you. What is the heart of the of the author? I right. The what he what he perceives the orders to be. Yeah. Yeah. Testing the microphone. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. You're back. Okay. Excellent. Just uh, needed to change out the battery there. Sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, Rodriguez, when you tried to use your magic, you got the result of you are the fuel your fire, uh, your anger consumes. It's a mm -hmm. Rayo card. So, do you have a Rayo card in the four cards that you have there? I do not. This is your first failure. Congratulations. <laughs> you are now an Shizzle. official wizard. So, um, what we could do is any or all of the following. So first of all, we've already moved our little queenie down here to the care section. Uh, a complication is already beginning to emerge. So now we're going to put this complication up on the board. We'll take Liam's here to say that that sucker has to be resolved before uh, we can move forward. Liam. Either you can describe how foully your magic goes right now, or we can let audience participation decide that. Your choice. Well, I mean, audience participation sounds like a great idea. Carlos, should you do a screen share again, darling? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I had forgotten I wasn't, in fact. So, here you go. Uh, so, Deborah and Holden, uh, what we have here uh, is... Uh, opportunity to cut loose. this card that so so what uh rodriguez was trying to do was basically force this person by a command uh to to obey and this is what happens instead so either of you can feel free to interpret this and decide what happens instead or i don't know maybe it's better to call on somebody um uh maybe because deborah uh you haven't had a chance to do this if you're out there uh, what do you think happens instead of what Liam wanted? Uh, so maybe this person really hates being told what to do. So it mm -hmm. triggers like a visceral rage. Oh, I like, oh, I can work with that. I can work with that. So, um, they're on top of not being, not liking it. It is a security trigger. Uh, he is royalty, and really don't want royalty to be easily manipulated by magic. So it triggers a, a fight or fight response that makes him aggressive and more feral and bigger. <laughs> <Ha>! <laughs> and a bit more dangerous, a little more wolf-like, if you will. <laughs> Wait, who is this? This is Vivi. Those calves. This is a, those calves suddenly sprout hair. <laughs> yes. Then, then oh, Vega ben just Vega into has been messing werewolf. with the benefactors. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at those yeah. hairy, hairy, hirsute calves. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, 
to, I can resolve the complication because I haven't used my magic yet. If, if can I can I try? Can I try? Well, I, I think you should role play it out a little bit. So, like, uh, first of all, uh, Ven Vega, you've been <laughs> assaulted by Liam. What do you do? Yeah, so it's it's an automatic trigger. It's a safety mechanism because he's royalty, and <laughs> he uh, he jumps on uh, Rodriguez the fair, and he's not really in his in the best state of mind. Like like Rodriguez in this wolf thing, uh, and kind of traded places in like a dimensional shift. So now you're getting the claws, my friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, uh, <laughs> Rodriguez, you are being uh, torn asunder by a wolf. Uh, this is terrible, Claire. You said you had an idea of how to resolve this. Well, I'm going to like take my red glass ball from my pocket and um, kind of, uh, you know, I have to draw blood to feed it. So I'll shatter it on the floor and like drag my hand across it so that my hand bleeds on the shards and the shards spring up to this like black and red monkey named Babu. And I'm like, Babu, get the wolf. Restrain, <laughs> don't kill. And, and Babu turns into Babu, the wolf. get the wolf. Yes. <laughs> Restrain, don't kill. And the, and the monkey <laughs> follow one order. What I hope will happen if my magic works will turn into a monkey this that's bigger than the wolf. And oh, great babe, great babe. <laughs> this is great. You'll be a baboon called Babu. <laughs> All right. So first, uh, Liam, you get to actually take this orange card and temporarily add it to your hand. Oh, so, um, good. yeah, because it think. will help you in future checks. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, cool. So if you get, you know. If you the next time you make a successful check, you have to remove all the extra cards you've taken. Mm. So for right now, uh, you have an extra one that will make it a little easier to succeed. To do check. magic the next time. Okay, I like it. Okay. All right. So and, Claire. Yes. Here's your magic. Here's Babu. Ruh row. Does Babu do what you want Babu to do? I do have a red card in my. Yeah. Um, it's a. Um, it's my magic card actually. So yes. Thank you, madam. Excellent. So, Claire, using this card, describe how many deaths can a body endure? Yeah, like... <laughs> if that oh, would have been shit. a failure, <laughs> that would have been right on the fucking money. So my my baboon, my now baboon, my weird baboon named Babu, um, <laughs> like like also hulks out and like these long like like crimson claws like they're kind of like claws um spring out but they they curve around uh vega wolf's like muscles and snap closed like manacles and um basically kind of creates a sort of i don't know like one of those um you know when they uh, like like you're you're tied to a board and like all of your limbs are manacled and you're just sort of uh, like kind of like, like on a rack yeah, like a rack. He's like a rack or like Han Solo when he's frozen. He's just sort of, and my, my baboon has become the rack. And then I'm like, quickly, quickly, get him on board before anybody sees. <laughs> and so like we, we kind of like lift him up in that light as a feather, stiff as a board sort of way. And we hustle him onto the ferry out of, out of sight of everyone on the docks who are just like gaping because I really just used my magic in public, but it happened really fast. A lot of people are looking at the big claw in the sand so hopefully it wasn't too big of a deal that there was like a werewolf and a giant baboon on the dock. <laughs> yeah, and as we're going, like Rodriguez Island. is just like, oh my goodness, a claw! <laughs> Look <laughs> at the claw! <laughs> All right, so Claire, congratulations. Ooh, we're going to remove saving? your magic card uh, because you have uh, accomplished that. So... And you can remove Cam's NPC as well. Uh, I will in a moment, yeah, if I can grab things. Sorry, it's just like being a little difficult right now. Yeah. There Back we go. Right. Because <laughs> Stop it! What are you Stop doing? Stop roll 20. Okay. Refresh? No, more like bite me, roll 20. Stop it! Okay. So while so... he's doing that, basically, I still haven't accomplished my order, but we have gotten rid of the complication card via magic. That's so... right. So this we can just delete. So I, I have a question. Who is who is sailing the ferry? 
Um, some, some of uh, maybe the monks of of La Perla, the the artist monks. Maybe they, the pearl cult. Maybe they run the ferry. Maybe that's the ferry money is the way they feed the monks. It's basically like their tourist service sort of thing. That's uh. So yeah, let's say it's a bunch of weird weird ass monks who who wear like long pearl necklaces. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> God. And they're so, all clutching yeah. their pearls as this goes on. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> they're all extremely polite though, and and they're looking at Ven Vega with like, kind of avaricious eyes, sort of like ah, fresh meat. <laughs> so, and I'm so, sort of like we're we're like I'm watching Ven Vega. Like I can't believe the Queen didn't let us know that Van Vega was one of us too, you know, like obviously, or and like, did he make a deal with the benefactors or is it just like one of those weird, there's something in a spot as water? Was he sort of being, you know, breast milked on this water or what? Like, what's his deal? What's his deal? Why can he hulk out like that? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they sell their art. That's absolutely right, Deborah. They they sell their art. They sell their fairies. They probably, you know, do, do like like they're probably lobster people. Like <laughs> they, they do like lobster pots and like muscle shell <laughs> muscle shell farming. They probably do a lot of things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they don't sell their pearls. Like pearls are sacred. They would never do that. Maybe they'd give them away sometimes, but they would never sell them. <laughs> like the most precious thing. They're like no. We can't take money for those. <laughs> so, so it's either um, like explore the claw or like head to the island, right? Well, let's say we're we're fair. Like my job is not to explore the claw. My job is to get Ven Vega to the island. But if we wanted to take a moment away from the ferry and if if Cam, who's still if um, I'm sorry, one is it? Sorry, where is yeah, it? Jose, Jose. Yeah, every, your name is here on Zoom, but it's it's just Cam's character on on World Twenty, so I'm switching back and forth. Yeah, oh, if Jose sorry. wants to explore the claw, uh, we can do a little side side quest there if you like. What do you guys want to do? I'd I'd like to uh, try to get. I'm still trying to uh, escort Jose, and so um, yeah. basically, my job i'll feel like my order is complete if we can get to the island safely and i will turn ven vega over to the monks um but, but maybe we should draw a card and see if anything happens on the ferry ride on our on our way to so i i have an observation oh yeah go for um, it um so the queen told me to uh, impersonate this guy, right? And right. I am pretty close to the queen. Like, I, Verena doesn't really, well, I, I don't want to say she doesn't lie to me. Like, she doesn't tell me things that don't concern me, uh, like her dwelling partners <laughs> and so on. Uh, on the other hand, I am really shocked that, like, this guy is a werewolf or something or the other. Because that was something I should have known. So you should have known. I'm the spy master. I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> this guy almost yeah. killed me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm also kind of wondering if Lorena knew knew this either. Maybe Lorena doesn't even know. It's good that we discovered this. Then on the maybe maybe on the way we can see if we can get him to talk. Um. My monkey is still out and being monkey manacles right now. Um, maybe between the two of you, you could interrogate him. I mean, I, I was already observing him reasonably closely for a while because I am going to impersonate him later. Right? Will you be so... able, if you catch his scent right now as a wolf, will you be able to, because you'll have both his scents, to, to be both his regular self and his wolf self? I would have, yes. I So here's the thing. I When I turn into somebody, I turn into their entire self, right? Okay. So not just their physical body, because when I'm sniffing a person, like his wolf self smell is also in it, yeah. right? But well, then I a, have, I have never be... impersonated this guy before. So it would have been like a weird surprise for me if I sniffed him and turned into him and then I realized that I'm not completely human. <laughs> well, well, so to be to to be clear, um, 
what I was envisioning is that it's not, what do we say? It's his body, but it's not him. Like he's not the one doing the magic. So when he's attacked, um, whatever magic they have, they kind of switched out the essence of the prince and put in this beastly essence instead of take over that. So I'm not sure if that would still be him um, or not. But certainly, either way, he'd have knowledge of it. Do you know, uh, do you have a sense of would, if the prince felt safe again, would they switch him back? Like if Yes, we... yeah. Okay. If he was no longer in, in danger, uh, it would definitely, you know, the, the, the magic would, would fade. Because okay. you don't want to be, you don't want to be, you know, uh, you no know, werewolf all the time. There should be a trigger, which is danger. Uh, keep our prince safe at all costs. Hmm. Well, we probably don't know that then. Yeah. <laughs> but here we are. We've got the baboon, you know, racked him up. And we have um, uh, Melitza, who has now realized that she will, that, that she has a more complicated person to impersonate than she'd thought before. And... Mm -hmm. Also, like these monk boatmen are giving us kind of weird looks because they uh, they they are not completely under the reina, right? Like they're a religious order, and they had uh, they had offered a favor by keeping this guy on their thing, and they're they're just like, "What are you bringing us?" Oh. Like we thought he was just a normal. Dude. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, we definitely want to like de-escalate the situation, <clears throat> make sure that they indeed keep him so maybe what i'll try to do is use my wits to convince the monk so that they'll keep ven vega safe that it's in everybody's best interest um and i've brought a present to the monks from the archives and it's it is like um a very old very highly decorated like golden cover like studded with pearls um an old tome on the like the origins of the cult of the pearl god and this maybe should have been in the band book section should have been burned but we've saved it for the infernal archives between um uh juan and i uh, jose sorry jose diaz and i and so I, I it's a little premature i was gonna wait till we got to the island of perla but i'm like oh gosh nobles you know <laughs> you they're just so full of surprises we don't know what they we don't know if they're feeding them at the palace, <laughs> but um, uh, speaking of palaces, uh, Lorena wishes to offer her heartfelt gratitude for taking care of her beloved Ven Vega, dear monks, and wishes to offer this tome for your own libraries out of the the very vaults of her treasure trove. And would this be a, would this be a good time for someone else to attempt uh, an NPC? Yeah, I was thinking I could be the one of the monks, maybe. Sure. Um, and what we'll do is I uh, will draw a card and see if it works like that. I convince you uh, mm -hmm. and either way you can interpret the card. If it goes my way, you can interpret the card. If it doesn't go my way, you can interpret the card. Does that sound, does that sound fair? Perfect. Okay. So Claire, so there are three monks, right? There, the whole fairy There's is an undetermined of number of monks. Yeah. You the whole crew. Lead monk. Yeah. So Claire, here is the card that will determine success or failure for you. It is an Espacio card. Do I have an Espacio card? I do have an Espacio card. Hooray. That is my character, my motivation card is Espacio. Every discovery expands infinity is what Perfect. that is. All so, right, so um, Liam, we'll make a, a, a monk character for you. So basically, when you make an NPC, you click mm -hmm. on one of the empty NPC slots that are available there. Oh, okay. um, so NPC 3 is available right now, and you edit it. Uh, oh. And it basically uh, gives you three things to fill out. Name, role, and personality. So name and role, you, I mean, just come up with a name. A role is basically this monk uh, character, so you know that already. And we'll draw um, a card to give you an insight into its personality or its powers or, you know, whatever the NPC is doing. So in this case, the monk, I don't know if it, what gender you're thinking, uh, mm -hmm. but the, the monk has this for their sort of like personality. 
Okay. This it's is right like how we made here. La Reina before, and we all interpreted the card for La Reina. Ooh. Oh. Ruins oh, this, are ruins. This one has a manuscript. Oh, no, that's not a manuscript. It could the be. Spooter Boys. Oh, okay. Um, so this is uh, Hermano, Hermano Sanchez. Um, he is <laughs> the master of boats for the uh, Cult of the Pearls. Um, he is the one that oversees any activities that happen on the waters between the two bodies of land. Um, so if someone is moving from one to another, he's involved. And this one was high profile enough that he came in person. Mm -hmm. um, he is often referred to as uh, the spider as well, because he has so many strands connecting everything. And he's, he's, he always is trying to control what's going back and forth between the islands and kind of pulling everything into his web. So he's, he's always looking to get ahead, always looking to get, you know, some advantage, always looking to trap something for the cult. <clears throat> um, and yeah, and, and at the offering of this book, what was, what was in the book again, Claire? What was the book about? That it's about the origins of the cult of the pearl. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So you, you flashed that text around and just for a, a barest instant, his eyes go wide and then they go right back to normal. Like he, he <laughs> like he's clearly like pulling a, a cartoon wolf eyes bugging out of his head thing for a second. <laughs> and then he goes, yeah, right, right back to, oh no, <laughs> of course. Yeah. You know, no big deal. I guess we'll take this book. Uh, it seems <laughs> like it might be interesting to someone, I suppose. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure we'll, we'll find a reason to read every single page and pour over every single word meticulously. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that. And then he uh, he turns to the rest of the crew and he's like, uh, proceed as planned as normal. Uh, these are all friends of the Pearl. And uh, as such, they will be treated with the utmost respect and regard. And no questions will be asked going forward. <laughs> and then he goes below decks with the and book. Then and then I'll just turn to Ven Vega and say, we mean you no harm. We have only your safety in mind. No matter what strange form you take, you are beloved of La Reina. Don't mind the monkey. He's here for your protection. <laughs> Don't mind the monkey. That's a t-shirt right there. Don't mind the monkey. He's here for your protection. And uh, and uh, and then like right about this time maybe the ferry like docks on La Perla and we just like I just order uh, Babu to re release him to the monks and Babu like opens its red claws and like kind of <laughs> gentle like gently places him down and then we like get back on the ferry and sort of like the monks no wait 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 I I need to sniff him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but maybe you can get him before Babu uh, releases him, maybe. It's funny oh, with this I, 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 We I, I, need to sniff him! <laughs> then it's like a, a Betty Hill yakety sack yeah. like chase when, around the island. Oh, well, when she does, he he uh, he calms down. He's like, oh, oh. He needs to, do a, he needs to sniff a little back. <laughs> ah, it's awesome. Show me your butt. I get That's... sniffing. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Oh, I, yeah. I, I wanted to sniff and transform not around these people though because then they'd be they'd, then they would be like why is he going back <laughs> well, can, you, <laughs> right. can you can you sniff like if you have a hood up can you sniff and they just see the queen sort of like canoodling with her lover i, I already have a wee hood up because i can't be out in the air remember like i right. I, I can't be out You've in got the a wind. mask on and everything right and yeah so i i basically just take out like this cotton ball from my nostril and I go and <laughs> sniff at this guy and uh, the thing is and I start transforming which nobody else notices but he's aware of so like he notices <laughs> when the scent changes gotcha. and right and then also he's like a little startled because it's not really just another werewolf scent it's literally his own scent and I wonder if that's calming or alarming that is absolutely common. <laughs> it's like, <okay. laughs> it's like, like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking 
that if he is smelling his beloved, there's some kind of emotional connection there. So he feels, unless, unless she's in danger, you know, <sighs> if she's not calm, then, then there'd be an issue. But uh, as long as she's so, chill, I think he'll feel... It- Okay. Like, does he does he feel safe with these people already? Because, like, I mean, I, I think uh, right now he's concentrating on you. So there's not a lot of there's not a lot of cognition going on there. Um, she's released him, uh, uh, Claire's character, whose name I can't see on here. On Viliana, Viliana, Viana, 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 Viana has released him. So he's not he's released him, and the guy who tried to call uh, up him with magic is not within eyesight. So he sees you smells you as the as the queen and he's getting to a more a more copacetic state where cool. now the the beast is starting to recede back into whatever pocket you know spiritual dimension it came from and the the prince is uh remanifesting that's great it's good because the narrative narrative at this point um and until my like this scene finishes out should go my way since we had some good card draws yeah so, right. so like this is really lovely and so beneath your mask mimi you're transforming yes yes and i i get a little taller which clearly people don't notice <laughs> awesome um your calves get really curvy oh my gosh Delicious, <laughs> scrumptious calves. Even through so, the robe, as we can tell. Lots of good things happen there, folks. You've got two NPCs knocked out. Uh, you have uh, Claire accomplished both your magic and your protagonist cards here. And, and my fact, order. And you get, I just wanted to make sure everybody got to see this part, but this is da, 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 one of the successes. So order removed. One down, three more to go. Excellent. So now we're back to the top here. I'll go ahead and stop sharing the screen so you all can kind of see each other and talk a little more easily now. Now what you're going to do is talk through who's going to be the next protagonist. Set up that scene the same way you set up the first one. Um, can I try? So, so halfway through uh, the voyage back to the, to the mm, mainland, uh, I, I take off my hood and I am basically uh, this guy because there were some people on the beach coast dock that saw him going off with these people, right? And like they, like he is generally known as like an aristocratic person, at least maybe not as the queen's lover. Um, might even be as the queen's lover because sometimes you know the subjects just know that yeah and so we don't want so many people on the docks to know literally that this person was taken there so uh he's coming back i mean we Mm. we've like changed and everything like we um pretty much left the person in the cloak back there but then the person in the cloak was wearing the Pearl Monk's cloak, costume cloak. So they thought, he, you know, there was a Pearl Monk and this guy and these two other people. And the Pearl Monk has stayed back on his uh, island and and they are coming back. So I wanted we, to say, I, I love everything. I think... As a protagonist, it means you have to accomplish the order. And I thought you were going to maybe wanted to go last since you had to do it at the wedding. At the wedding. But right. this is still good as far as setting the scene. But I don't know if you want to accomplish your order right now. Maybe. Yeah, no. Because I, I do have a two-part order, right? Like one one of it is to impersonate this yeah, guy. But also impersonate, impersonate him at him. the wedding. Yeah. Wait, didn't Mimi wedding. didn't Mimi use her ma- uh, magic, or she has to use a, a card to use her magic? Oh, she did. Oh, just yeah, this is my yeah, this is my yeah. magic. So, well, uh, yeah, yeah cool. you you used it, but you didn't use it in a way that uh, was contested. It was just to quickly advance the plot and stuff. It's basically oh. when it's a challenge of some kind that you're trying to accomplish. So you can use your magic if there isn't anything at stake uh, and mm. just have fun with it and whatever, just as a plot point. But anytime okay. you uh, need to make a check is is because there's some kind of contest that you're trying to resolve. Right, okay. okay. So so 
Yeah, okay. Right now my magic's still there. Good. <laughs> cool, cool. So yeah, so who will be next protagonist? Well, I mean, Cam's uh, doing investigatory stuff right now, right? Oh yeah, he's oh, yeah. back at the dock, so we yeah. can just be all NPCs in this scene if we want. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. cool. So, so uh, yeah, we we'll still all set the scene starting with Cam. Okay. So, uh, what you see for you um, is uh, are these these broken down ships, but it's at uh, low tide, and uh, it, you, and at low tide. Um, that is when this market suddenly these people just appear. Like they basically have, you know, they have a very certain have a certain amount of time to get in, do their business, and then get out because you no, know, the tide's coming in. That kind of hides the evidence for, uh, for what the for their illicit, you know, black market stuff. Uh, so it's a perfect cover. Nobody goes down there to look, or rather, the evidence gets washed away. Uh, so what you see, there are people who are really good at setting up like temporary temporary like kind of tent cities and so like um like hermit crabs just kind of show up and they wash over the ships then they everybody knows where to go and they start setting up their their wares now my i am i have met my the rest of my my team and we're watching this happen you know it for the most part usually you know the queen knows the stuff is going on uh but you know it's not a big concern but today it's a big concern because of the wedding so um, he is that he is there with about 30 guys and when the uh when the the black market shows itself uh he whistles and they all descend and he says just take him down if you find anything interesting if you find anything illicit you know bring it to me and uh go off in teams i'm gonna go for this way because i feel like i have a sense uh that that some of the more high-end stuff is going to be in this direction away from my team as they run in and they start breaking heads so how does that so, pertain to your goal of winning the game though so right now uh i think that if there is any that there are going to be people coming here today who are not, who are off the island uh because of the wedding people are just coming because they know there's gonna be misses to be had so going to be dignitaries and and their own black market people are going to be here as well so there's going to be a really good chance that something big uh, might be here of uh, some kind of artifact and if so um this might be the place to do it because hey there's some kind of connection to water like he feels like if he sees it like he'll know what it is so it's kind of intuition is telling him that you know that is probably in this direction but like he just knows that because you know of all the additional people coming for the wedding, there's going to be more people from off island that will uh, that might give him something lucrative at the same time as being you know plot driven. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Awesome, Mimi. What would you like to contribute to the scene? Oh, I I, I was supposed to be part of the scene, so um. So just everybody just helps setting the scene with like one or two. Right, people. right. So so yeah, all of us down. have gone into this black market especially now that i'm impersonating um what's his name this is like, just... like back at the this is because cam wasn't with us we're still this is like a meanwhile way. yeah this is a meanwhile we haven't been here so if you bet so if there's an npc you're making up you're giving him a name them or them a name yeah, or you could just say like the skies are roiling, or you could say like the sand is full of glass and Cam's gonna cut his feet up constantly, or you know. <gasps> <laughs> I'm not bitter about werewolf attacks or anything. <laughs> so, so I I can also just give Cam a situation. Yeah, some kind of detail rather than about the an team. NPC. Yeah. It's basically like the camera, the camera followed us to the island, but now it's cutting back to parallel where Cam's character stayed behind. And so you can put your camera, so Cam has just said he sent his 30 thugs to break Wait, up the black wh Why is Cam on Perla? Because he, he's a thug that collects m uh, magical archival materials, and he feels that some will be coming up at the black market because so many 
new visitors are in be, like influxing for the, but the queen's wedding but the black market is on the mainland right like on espada yeah i'm sorry i no? said i said parallel not I, I meant espada you are absolutely right to be confused so sorry so cam's back on espada mainland in the black market in the in the shipwreck area at low tide and and he he goes in a different direction from the rest of his people right um yes. what is yes. cam's magic power uh, I can uh, withdraw secrets from people uh, by making contact. Uh, it could be as fast as a punch or a strike, and there's a certain kung fu aspect to my uh, uh, to my character's abilities. So it's hitting pressure points to get secrets. So, so you um, you wander into a part of the. I'm I'm not talking. Why am I playing your character though? Like there's there's a. Uh, yeah, part of the, the you know like the part of the market that your character has moved into um has a number of pearl march merchants one after the other and uh and not all of them are even superhuman like they're, they're not completely human um does this world have people that non-human people that we know of? Like, are are, are they well known? We could decide that right now. We could be mutants because mutants keep happening from the waters, right? So, so, so there. Right. I'm gonna just write it in our world building. Whatever you say right now, I'll I'll put it down. Right. So, so there are sense. foreign people from like the other other countries that we haven't worked on so far. Mm -hmm. And so they're not just from Espada, they're not just from Perla, but there are pearl merchants and each of their wares are different. And at some point, Jose notices the kind of pearls that were in his vision, but they are also like in a, in a big container, right? Like at the stall so there are a lot of them there are like a hundred of them or something and these are expensive like these have a little bit of writing on them and but they are way more expensive than just jewelry pearls and there aren't three of them there's many so he goes to the store maybe gives a punch to the first person <laughs> running the store <laughs> i don't know or, or will yeah but Good. That's great. That's a great setup. Uh, take it from there, Liam. Sure. Yeah. So as he's uh, noticing these pearls and as is his men are working over the wrecks, um, he he n gets called over to one of them. Or not called over, but he notices one of them is uh, approaching one of the wrecks. And the wreck has a um, a very large sculpture on the uh, the front of it. And, you know, as ships will have, you know, mermaids or a big head or a dog or whatever. And this one happens to have a very large finned aquatic creature that is holding one of those pearls in its <clears throat> mouth. And that is the main headpiece of the, one of the wrecked boats, one of the wrecked ships. And nice. Nice like Cam had described that these merchants come like hermit crabs and build their little um, <laughs> stall villages yeah, yeah yeah among the wrecks the merchant who has built their stall under the wreck of the finned guild green creature holding the strange pearl is the merchant that Mimi mentioned that has these large um, like black and green pearls with runes carved into them um and abundance like as if it were they were common stones or paper mache where there are these strange arcane pearls they're enormous and the merchant has kind of like a raggedy hood and when it looks up um the face is insectile it's as big as that and the, the claws that come out of its robes are as big as the claw that was buried in the sand back there. This is an enormous lobster-like creature. Um, and as uh, you know, as as you see that that he's that the the lobster merchant is 
is using its claw currently to carve these arcane designs into the oh. into the pearl. Wow. Nice. nice. <laughs> Connections being made all over the place. Cam, it's your scene. What kind of uh, NPCs? It seems like you're going to definitely need a crab merchant. Uh, so, um, sorry, someone else NPCing the character? Or am I, I'm going to interact and then they're going mm -hmm. to... One of okay. us plays the NPC and, and it gets rid of an NPC card. I'll I've play, already gotten rid of mine, so... I'll play, I'll play the crab merchant, lobster merchant. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, do the Zoidberg. Zoidberg. Yeah. Zoidberg. Zoidberg. So my 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 character, he is not a small a small man. Uh he is intimidating. Uh and the crab merchant, like he can see like what's going on around him. Uh so I walk up to him very slowly, and my hand is, you know, menacingly on my sword. I have a sword, you guys didn't know that. Uh and I say, Look, I notice we notice everything that comes in and goes out. We know the regulars, you know, and you're not from here. So at this point, Claire, you said you wanted to play this NPC? Uh, yes. So um, NPC number four is available for you to write the name of your- Oh, I did already. Um, um, uh, I just didn't write the name in. I don't need to know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Your name is just... where you're from, okay. what you did, as long okay. as you love me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. So, Claire, here's your card to give us a little more information about your unpronounceable crab merchant. Here's what your crab merchant thinks of the world. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so the crab so so I, I um here Jose Diaz has come with his hand on his sword saying you're not from around here. That's basically what just happened, right? Yeah. yeah. And yes. and the crab merchant was like in the middle of a very intricate arcane fucking rune carving, okay? It's like artist, you do not interrupt you could ask Christian Bale. You do not interrupt an artist at work, right? Oh shit. And Crustacean Bale. And the and the <laughs> crustacean looks over and it's just going to very casually, like the way a bear would swipe almost half asleep, very casually try to just gut Jose and go back to his work. Whoa! Oh, whoa. It's what I'm gonna try to do. Whoa. Um, whoa. See what happens? Okay. So this, my power doesn't have anything to do with, you know, abating giant claws. So this would just be my own ability to, to deal with this, uh, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, my guy's a big guy. So he's not the kind of guy that does a lot of duck and cover <laughs> and run around. Uh, so when he sees that claw coming, Really, the only thing that he can do is step into it and swing oh. with his sword. Okay, so this is going to be basically like a wits check to see if you do this. Now, the scene is going to go your way if you succeed here. So uh, just to remind you, uh, Jose, you'll take a look at your four cards to let us know. Uh, gotcha. Hold on. Card. Oh, I should not be clicking on the Zoom. Oh, let's get out of here. Um, <laughs> I know I keep doing I that do too. That. Me too. And where's Cam? Here's my cards. Why do I have five cards? Um, you don't. That's me. That's, that's me. Really I'm Rodriguez. You're Jose. No, I'm Cam. Oh, how did the Zoom pop up here again? It's, okay. it's called Cam Player Sheet. I don't. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no I know. It's just. It's just the Zoom popped up. I didn't want it to. So. Oh, okay. You're the <laughs> second one from the yep. left. Cam. Yep. 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 Okay. And I have a red card on two, is that two green cards? Nope. Shouldn't be. Red, be. green, orange, purple is what you have. Yes, but I'm trying to click on the cards, but it just says steel card or- Oh yeah. Do Wait, you might not have the right one open then if it's saying steel card. You don't have to click on the cards. You just have to click on the, the little deck of four and look yeah. at the colors. You don't have to do anything else. Okay, so it's red, orange, what looks like green and what looks maybe it's blue because it's like looks like there's little swirls like maybe it's seahorses. purple 
That's You've purple. got a purple. Mm -hmm. That's a spacio. Take your sunglasses off, God. No, it's not even. <laughs> oh, I can zoom in. I definitely have two. Can you see? I have a red, I have an orange, I have what looks like two greens, but one of them has sea mermaids, the other one has what looks like clouds and baby yeah, spouting. Yeah, so one water. is green and one is blue, basically. Baby blue and green. Oh, okay. oh you know what? I have night, I have night vision. I have night uh, vision on, uh, so as changing the color. Uh, <laughs> oh, I see. I couldn't there see what you did. All right, let's see how it goes down. Okay. okay. Yeah. Here's your card. What is it? That's a fail. What is oh, it? Oh, no. Oh dear, that's gonna oh, hurt. Oh dear. Oh no, oh, that's the gonna edges be bad. are very ragged. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh dear, Cam. Okay, so let's go through this nice and slow first. <laughs> this um, this might be the last we see. So <laughs> you see a full <laughs> Our queen moves to the caution space at this point. Cam, you're gonna yes. click on this card and actually add it. So you're gonna have five cards temporarily until you succeed at some point. Uh, but uh yeah so uh go ahead and right click on this and just add it to your uh four cards that you have right now got it and excellent um it didn't show up now let me just refresh chat hello uh it's your opportunity if you would like to take it to uh describe for cam what disaster he has wrought by trying to cut this monster crab's arm off with his sword uh if if you're interested uh let me know right now so that we can draw a card for you otherwise cam will just let you uh describe your own fate with that card okay mm -hmm. is any, I, mean, I, I i have an idea uh but it is up to anybody if they want to jump in so i see deborah's uh she says she's back uh deborah are you interested there. in deciding uh ah, there perfect is. that is excellent uh so Cam, if you will just uh, be so kind as to put that card back on the board temporarily, you'll take it back. But I just want it. Uh, sure. I mean, just. I, I, it, the, you just drag it, it on there. It's not working. Oh, I just got it. Hold on. Okay. So it was the. Look closer. Card? The edges the are. The gold one. Yeah. I'm going to right click on it. No, no. Just uh, left click and drag it onto the board. Okay, hold on, because this is being frustrating. Oh, oh. Ah, okay, so that's a problem. I see two five-card decks. And I, one I them... see your card inside that deck or your deck already. No, I don't, sorry. I, I, I see it too. What I'm saying is... Oh, it's is... gone. It's gone now. <laughs> What I'm saying is I see, I see a four and I see a five over my name. I don't know why, but whatever. I have it now. Okay, yeah, you put it there. You got it there. So I'm going to go ahead and just make it big. Deborah, right now, uh, poor hapless uh, Jose has taken an, a swing and error uh, because it's not going to accomplish what he wanted. <laughs> what do you think has happened instead based on this card? Originally, the crab man was trying to gut him with his claw. Oh, right, because you might not have been there. The, the crab Let's man... Not forget that the part. crab folk. Crab folk. Um, are crab you folk. particularly attached to your blade? Uh, no, a standard issue. <laughs> well, let's Wait. say that it it strikes at such an angle, or maybe the crab man being blocks it at such an angle that it kind of chips and shatters. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, okay. That could have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> it could still be worse. So, but well, make it a little worse if you feel like you can. Go ahead and take this card yeah. and describe what happens when you're short. And this is uh, a complication because he scuffed their carapace, and they really didn't want their carapace scuffed. So, if you do deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> can I, as an M as the NPC, um describe a complication that has arisen from this sure uh and uh i mean yeah uh technically uh cam should describe the oh, complication sorry. but you would play the you know the character in that okay so uh it knocks me back uh along with the sword as it shatters and as i land the shards of the sword 
they just rain down over me, just dunking near my head, uh, Ow. my legs, you know, close by. Just a so if oh, okay. I move, oh, uh, nice. I am in. Uh, I'm going to be in trouble. So it is. It's it's a very unforgiving situation that I find myself in. Um, can I add something to here, or is there somebody else's turn? It's somebody else's turn, but you can always make a contribution as long as Cam sort of says, sure, go ahead. It's like his scene. Okay. Cam? Yeah. Yeah. So yes. Mimi wants to add something. Are you? Are you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So um, because, because you are punched the crap person, right? Mm -hmm. um, you did make skin contact. So while while no, no, you I, like, I didn't I didn't punch him I used my sword. No, then the, then this doesn't work. Yeah, so Cam, go ahead and take this card back into your hand here, and Claire and you can now continue to interact. Yeah, hold on a second. Where? You just right click on it and hit take. Got it. And disappears. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question for the protagonist. <clears throat> protagonist yes. Cam, um, is Jose sweating now? in this precarious situation. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, he is definitely feeling a little <laughs> wet in the pits. <laughs> so my he is seasoning himself. <laughs> my unpronounceable crab merchant, after trying to gut you and you falling back, is now, like, at first was, like, just going to go back to carving the arcane runes into this giant pearl, but <clears throat> a new distraction befalls them it's like noseless self starts <laughs> sniffing and go and like looks right at you and suddenly like very carefully very gently places the pearl back in its netting and like kind of flips its claws in such a way as to indicate um v dismemberment very soon <laughs> 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 I hate drooling, the jester. Drooling and foaming in a very strange, hungry way, and it turns to you and starts coming gotcha. closer. That's the, uh, that's the complication. <laughs> that's my complication. Okay, here's here's what happens. Uh, I blow my freaking whistle <laughs> to okay. call to call over the rest of the thug, rest of uh, the rest of my uh, my team to attack uh, this crab person. And here's my goal. My hope is that while they are dealing with this guy, I can take this perfume, cologne, perfume, scent, if you will, that Atar. I Atar, that I previously procured from uh, Marianne Curie. Marianne Curie? No. What's her character? Marinel. Marinel. From Marinel to respritz myself. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I was going to say, cause you really want to call 30 other people over to smell you, but yeah. now, it's a, now, it's, now it's a buffet. <laughs> so I'm assuming they'll be busy first. I mean, their senses won't be as as uh, honed, I think, as the uh, as the crab, whatever magical being. Yeah. You know, so Mike Tyson says everyone has a plan to get punched in the mouth. Let's see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> Here is your card. You I think I have one. I think he's got a green. Yeah. I got it. I got that. Yes. Oh, oh my god, this goodness. is so great. <laughs> <laughs> Should we not drink wine? Let's all chill. Yeah. Everybody chill. These are fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Yes, yeah, so tell us how it works out. You're gonna give me back the uh, gold card that you took temporarily as well for this, but uh okay. we get to remove the complication. Uh okay. Nope, this is the Zoom. Okay, once around one second. All right. And I'm going to I move I just move it out, right? And yeah, there just it is. drop it. Yep. Okay. Great. And I pick up this one? No. Nope. This is going okay. away too, but first describe your success by using this card. Okay. Uh my my team, who are just as burly and and bro -y as I am, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hair in all the right places, they come running over uh, swords and sticks and spears in hand, and they see me on the ground, and they see this thing chittering toward me, towards me, and they just start attack, 
uh, they start to, they're not looking for mercy. There's this C, their, their guy, their, their, their team leader on the ground. And they, and just so you know, they don't really have any rules of engagement. Like, uh, like the princess is kind of hands off when it comes to how, you know, the inquisitors deal with, you know, these, uh, magical alien, uh, threats, not alien, uh, but, uh, the, uh, blasphemous Mutant. threats, yeah. uh, blasphemous, yeah, blasphemous threats. So, you know, they're, they're used to being, uh, brutal. So while they are doing that and hacking at this thing and basically getting into a melee, uh, I am daintily moving back over the the pieces of my sword and I uh, quickly spray any part I feel that is sweaty and I rub it over my body. I notice I only have like half a a a uh, goblet left, uh, but I put it back and i turn back to my to the crab just as before uh my head dog biff uh, i don't know how you spell biff in spanish but la biff <laughs> um uh, is about to land a killing blow he says no i say i i and i say no stop hold up hold up and he, he waits and i walk over all pumped like oh you thought you were gonna have a snack tonight <laughs> I a snack every night that's not what this is. I high five some of my boss. Yeah, that's what you get. I roll thirty deep in this mother. <laughs> <laughs> hold him, hold him. I'll make it a shot. Hold him, hold him down. This is how we do it. And so, as they're holding this thing down, he's basically stunned. Uh, I'm gonna do my cipher strike. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, let's see if that works now. So, and oh. Graham, is this cipher strike to see how the game is played? Is that the yes. secret you're trying to extract? Yes. yes. All right. I'm like, so I, this... I put two and two together. I've seen. Oh my god, I know what I know what these pearls look like. I've seen them before. I've seen them now. All right. This Cam. is what I saw in my dream. Or this... right, yeah. Let's okay. see. Oh, it is. Uh oh. A brown. Do I have a brown? I don't see. think you have a brown. I don't, I don't brown think either. you. I think you got rid of all your cards that might have helped you, and you do not have this card. Um. Um. Sorry. Where is? Yeah. I think. I think. I think I'm in trouble. I think the fruit, or in this case, the Jose, oh. desires to be devoured. <laughs> oh Jesus. no! Okay. Wow. Oh, no. Wow. I think maybe Mimi should do this. Wow. One. Wow. Wait, what, what can <laughs> I do? No, no, no. I mean, like, so, I mean, oh, wait, or is it Claire that has to, yeah, Claire. Yeah, I mean, Claire, because she's an NPC, but mostly Cam, like, you describe oh, what horrors okay. await you, you know, so, like, you usually get to describe your own terrible fate. But let's just don't remember you're now in the danger zone. Uh huh. And, uh, <laughs> this point, you, uh, you do get another complication right now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, needs to be resolved. And uh, Cam, I don't know what it is about you, but you are cursed at this game. <laughs> <laughs> I, fail, I fail beautifully at this game. It's you do. Um, yeah, so so what happens, Cam? And of course, Claire will be there to help. Well, you know that those anti-nail biting pouches that taste bitter and terrible you can purchase? Maybe Marinelle should make some of those for all of... Mm -hmm. I just got to get out of this. Um... Can I figure out a way to get out of this? I think you got too close to his mouth, my man. The fruit desires yeah, so first one be... bad thing happens. So, so yeah, the, the, first... the narrative cannot go your way right now. You no, can't no, no, get no, out no. of it quite yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> so I hit him. I get something, but it's so much more than I thought. And it's cool. just kind of short circuiting, you know, my, my, the control of my body. And I step back onto a shark. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> that's got its thing. So that's what I've done. How far should I take this? <laughs> that is up to you, my friend. You just can't die because this... you can't die. So you can get as graphic as you want to, but you can't let your wizard die. You gotcha. can be incapacitated. Like you could like black out and we could cut back to the other people trying to find you or something. But yeah, you, you can be the worst you can be is incapacitated. Okay. And uh that is enough blood, you know, just just out to have my whole team just turn and say, dude, dude, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude. <laughs> Bro, 
Are you bleeding A1 steak sauce? <laughs> and, <laughs> and heroin? <laughs> I just so everybody knows, I made an NPC card for El Beef. If anybody wants to play him and use and like get your NPC, like if El Beef has a has a response to this, <laughs> putting it out there. Yep, it's not that could be Mimi. Yeah, no, okay. Uh, if not, then I'm gonna say. Bro, look, and I just point, and they look in a direction because they're morons, and I start to run, and then <laughs> cut, <laughs> cut scene cut back as up. they as, as they run after me. Okay, okay. perfect. Oh man, end scene. Uh, this card is yours, Cam, so you get to add this to your pool, so you can't get biffed <sighs> by a carnet card next time. Oh, that was that was fun. So, gamically. Cam has not resolved his order yet, so sometime mm -hmm. during the game, somebody else can be protagonist now since that protagonist round failed mm -hmm. and try to accomplish their order. But at some point in time, if Cam <laughs> sees a way to accomplish his order, he can mm -hmm. try again, like... I like, have ideas. Yeah. Like, <laughs> use his wits to try to comprehend this massive overview right. information or, or whatever. But at some point, he can try to do that again, but somebody else can take over protagonist now. Yeah. Claire's NPC <laughs> card goes away, though, right? Uh, it sure does. Nice. But so anybody can still play that unpronounceable crab hermit merchant if you need to at any point. It's up there to be played. <laughs> what is the crab merchant doing right now? <laughs> he's chasing well, after. He's getting oh, no, back oh, up. No, 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 no. Yeah. The crab, it's, not the, it's not the crab merchant. Like he's been incapacitated. So like oh, okay. he's been like he's been stabbed and he's been beaten he's been broken so like if someone helps him get back up i guess then i got thugged him. yeah I so like the thugged. people chasing me he got are, marked yeah he got curved or they got uh, marked. it got uh, marked. so so the people ones who were chasing me would be biff and the rest of my team right okay. because he smells so good of fresh fresh fruity blood and heroiny blood. Okay, yeah, so we should decide who's going to be protagonist next, to, you know, how you're going to bring scenes together, that sort of thing. And Liam, I think you said you had some ideas? Um, I did, I did yeah. Um, so if we go protagonist, like if Liam and I, either of us, do we have to use our whatever ma magic? Or something. We don't have to, I don't think. Yeah, we just That's we just eventually. become the protagonist of the next scene. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you eventually have to use magic somehow. You don't have to use it when you're protagonist. Mm -hmm. The only thing you have to do as a protagonist is resolve your order somehow. Eventually, yeah. Doing some kind of contested draw when you draw and see if it matches. So it could be wits, it could be magic, it could be that sort of thing. Hmm. Who's going? Um, I can be protagonist. No, it's unfortunate that the, wait. So sorry. The, so the queen's card, the danger card, it doesn't move back up, or can it? It can't Does move it? back up. But I was actually mistaken. You don't get a complication because you landed on the danger zone there. Uh, you were just you know running for your life at this point. But um, yeah, at this point, there's no way to go back. The only way to prevent it from moving forward at this point is to activate dooms. <laughs> And so, like, for, like one failure equals one doom. If you don't want it to go, the next failure, somebody else has to activate their doom. You can kind of keep it at bay for four rounds, basically. Got it. Unless somebody decides not to activate their doom. Oh, wait. I think we got rid of that, Carlos. I think we, everybody has to, right? Eventually. Yeah. Like, g just generally speaking, you just decide the order. Yeah. Okay. So now, if there's a new protagonist, start setting the scene and we'll all go around and help. Sure. Um, have we agreed that it's me? I think so. Because, I mean, we're not at the wedding, so that kind of precludes Mimi being able to be the protagonist, I think, yeah? We can also skip ahead to the wedding in time. Depends on, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to, scene doesn't have to follow scene. We can do okay. it. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we'll skip a little bit ahead. We'll narrate that as we pulled up to the beach, it was uh, Indiana Jones-style scene where uh jose was running down the beach <laughs> with a horde of hungry people chasing after him and he was like keep going keep going and so we <laughs> we just kind of keep the boat going along the coast and he like ran up and jumped 
Um, and then, you know, we, we bandaged his foot and, uh, mm. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it was, it was so salty and covered in sea salt that we didn't smell anything. And mm. also he had been madly spraying himself with perfume the entire time. <laughs> so he stinks. Also, you know, Malika <laughs> has uh, cotton up her nose anyway. So maybe she's yeah, the one doing it. She the can't really smell it anyway. Uh, but so then um, we, we yeah. right now no, I don't no, no, have cotton no, no. up my nose. Oh right, because you had to smell somebody, yeah. yeah. But yeah, the the scene skipped forward to where we're all back in the spy master salon. Um and uh he has <laughs> arranged for a, a kind of before party, like a parlor event for all the guests. Not quite a bachelor party but it's kind of a bachelor party because I don't <laughs> think those have been invented yet, but we're throwing a bachelor party for, um, Ferdinand, was it Ferdinand? What's his name? Fernando. Fernando. Yeah. Fernando. Wait, we're throwing a bachelor party for Fernando on the house. And, uh, and Rodriguez intends on, you know, making light conversation with all of the guests and asking them questions to try to figure out who it is intends to be uh pulling the strings as it were um and it's it's a nice event it's got all the fixings of a good bachelor party there's drink there's food there's dancers of you know whatever variety you would like to have the lights are kind of dim um so that if you want to be in a corner and not really being seen all that well you can be you know so on and so forth and it's packed with people and there's all sorts of smells and sights and sounds happening. Cool. Claire, you're next. Um, one of the main delicacies that sort of happened late in the day is a um, huge pot of like lobster bisque. <laughs> <laughs> that was brought that's, in. That's <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Claire, that's trip. horrible. Uh, <laughs> delicious and um the new star trek where they eat like the guy who's like the number one of the ship but anyway and uh the queen was very pleased also not only oh. with lobster bisque but to have received at no cost to herself um several new arcane pearls straight from the black market so she has added to her wealth um and is very smug that evening where i don't know if she's in the room at the bachelor party uh did you imagine that um there could be conjoining rooms there's like a hallway between two rooms one for the bachelor party one for the bachelorette party that, the hen party and right? you can go back and forth if you want but you know you don't have to <laughs> maybe yes absolutely so in her in her own room at her own party she uh like a hen is sort of squatting over her newfound pearls and studying the arcane symbols and tracing them and uh and deriving what knowledge she can from them my precious cam you're next oh so can can I describe what my character is doing in sure. this scene? Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So generally he be he be the one, you know, who had brought the keggers. Like him and his team, they do two things. They break heads and they know how to freaking party. But uh today, uh well, he wouldn't be invited to this anyway. But uh he is there on special mission because of the, the wizards are over here. But he is having a really hard time concentrating because he's got a lot of stuff going on in his head. And as he's looking around the room, he's getting flashes and bits of it. And he doesn't know how to get it out. And he sees Rodriguez and Rodriguez sees him. And uh, he sees Jose kind of bleeding, not bleeding, that's bruised <laughs> and holding his head. Um, and it's like, dude, I, uh, I got something in me. I got to get it out. I got to get it out. I don't know how to get it out. Nice. Mimi, what do you want to add to the scene? Okay, so I am currently in the form of uh, Ven Vega at this party. And uh, <laughs> so obviously, uh, obviously in a little bit of his finery and I am obviously pretending not even, haven't ever seen Jose and Rodriguez. Like, or, or, or if I had seen them, they're like, you know, 
royal employees. They're like nothing to do with me and I'm hanging out. Uh, I mean, hanging out, being a noble man, honestly. And then I noticed that this is this is the bachelor party, right? So like Fernando is here. Fernando? Right. So um, I'm hanging out and then I see it some nobles, noble men, I guess this is because this is a guy's party, um, whisper to Fernando, pointing at me, something pointing oh, at me. No. Oh no, oh ah, no, drama. <laughs> and, drama and, bomb. And I, I, I try to kind of look away, oh. look away with my drink and, you know, better drinks out there or something. I love <laughs> and, it. Um, so, uh, yeah, right. So I, I go off to another part of the room and, uh, like suddenly there's the king in front of me. Like I'm, I'm trying to dodge him through the crowds <laughs> and so on. So, <clears throat> and then he asks, like, he looks, looks me in the eye and, uh, he's a bigger dude but I'm prettier, but whatever. Um, and he says, so you are like the thorn in my marriage, are you? Ooh! Wow. So at that high point of drama, right, Liam, right, it's your right, scene. Right. What, <laughs> what, what are you doing and what, you know, how are you reacting to these different things that are set up here? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, yeah. <laughs> kind of like in a lobster bisque, though. But uh, <laughs> that, that's the one that's got my attention for sure. Um, so yeah, while while Rodriguez is getting himself a bowl of lobster bisque to try to soothe his 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 attack <laughs> from a werewolf and and kind of like calm his nerves from from that utter and abysmal failure of his magic, which he's not used to having happen. Um, he's getting this lobster bisque and, and Jose kind of like stumbles over to him, knocks into his bowl, bisque gets a little bit on his <laughs> robe and he's like, dude, dude, my head is just full of knowledge. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then at the same time, Fernando is kind of like <laughs> chest bumping up to whom I know is not actually, you know, Vivi. And I'm like, oh shit. Uh, which one of these do I solve first? So, <laughs> um, so essentially, <sighs> I remember what happened when I tried to use magic on a noble before, and that was a bad idea. So I'm going to look at Jose, and I'm going to be like, do you trust me? Uh, you're the spy master. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read and write? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, he's literate. He is literate. Good. No, like, I'm literally out loud asking him. <laughs> he can read and write. He's a little offended. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's picked up on this, but Rodriguez is kind of a jerk. Um, so he's like, okay, I need you to go into this side room over here. You're going to find some parchment and you're going to find some quills. Write and then this is where I use my magic on them. And I say, write everything in your head down, whether or not it makes sense. So let's see if it go. works. Remember, you have five cards to help you. So mm -hmm. hopefully you've got a Sangre card. Oh, I got, I got a, I got a Sangre. Yeah. I got right. a Sangre. So he is Sangre. I'm it, so look sangry. at how this possession is working here. Know. Look at that card. Oh my God, it's The perfect. artist would possess you, Cam. Perfecto. Amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, just describe how it happens and Cam, you know, tell us what Jose does in, in reference to that. Um, so am I describing and then Cam? <laughs> yeah, yeah, each of you. Okay. Yeah, so you go, you go into that room, like, you just, like, heel turn as if, again, you are possessed by something and you don't, you're not entirely sure how that just happened but you're fairly sure that rodriguez just did something to you and uh you feel possessed to go and just <laughs> word or image or whatever vomit onto you know parchment and with a quill 
and you go into the, the little <laughs> side room and, and there's like several ink wells, there's several quills, there's lots of parchment. Um, and uh, you, you think that you could probably get an entire novel out in like five minutes with the motivation that you have just been given. Awesome. So this is an interesting scenario where by doing this, you're actually gonna accomplish Cam's goal as well. That was so my idea. So I think that actually satisfies your protagonist requirement too, in that you've accomplished one of the goals. <clears throat> that means, Cam, that you're going to have to accomplish Liam's goal. And what was Liam's That's, goal? Liam's goal was revealed to me, the one holding the strings from your vision in secret. Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. So actually, I remember that. I've just had rum. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, my plan was that in this download, I would have information of basically any necessary plot <laughs> uh, required, required at this point. So the, the, the creature that I, well, the crab, really, the bisque, if we're being really The unpronounable. <laughs> I'm going to change the NPC's name to the bisque. <laughs> we got Biff and bisque. Holy oh my shit. God. <laughs> Wait, is this a Biff bisque? Am I eating Biff? Biff! <laughs> You're delicious. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, so this uh, Bisque, uh, he was he was a, a priest, very much like the priests of the Island of the Pearls, uh, but he is a priest from this dimension that the pearls come from. Like like all that magical those magical waves, you know, is kind of getting their attention and pulling them in closer, uh, and he is. And when I say a priest, like, yeah, so like acolytes of these, um, the other, the other aliens, the other aliens that, that, the other that benefactors. We, yeah, that yeah. we have, that we have described. And what he, what, what a Jose starts to write down is he's writing down, uh, all the other acolytes of the gods who are here on the island of oh, oh, the sinister island, dancers uh, right now uh and he's listing names uh and like where they're from uh and you know what their what what their relationship is to this other person so he's, he's going a little bit nuts he's running out of paper he needs to go to the walls he just starts writing these things down does and, they have images of who they are that you also are writing down, maybe? I, like their not, faces or something? I'm not drawing, but it's like a list of details, you know? So oh, it's just, okay. That's all I, but they'd be like, this guy has a mole here, and like, he's, and his name is this, and it's connected. It, it's, you, have, you have to do some reading, because he's actually, okay. that's what he told him to do, was, a, okay. was to write down everything that he knows. Uh, and the other thing, oh yeah, it was my own goal. So the what he describes was uh, basically the grand puba of these uh, second aliens. They're the ones who were playing this game, and they had to give their firstborn, whoever lost, uh, had to give their firstborn son to become mortal in this world, and that would have been the prince, the actual prince, Fernando. Fernando. Oh, if that that makes Fernando's sense. a crab people crab people yeah. so you mean, you mean <laughs> they're ray all bisque we're all bisque we're surrounded by bisque so but ray fernando who's about to marry la reina yes. not you don't mean like uh ven vega it's no ray fernando. fernando no fernando yeah who is and so this is the human child of the secondary aliens is that yes. what you mean okay. yes so while he's writing all that i <laughs> Rodriguez wanders over to where the fight's about to start with uh, with Fernando and fake Vivi. Right. Okay. And just as a quick awesome. game note, uh, because Mimi, you played the Ray, you know, sort of like talking to him, I removed your NPC card. So we've done oh, all nice. the required NPCs. Now anybody can play any NPC at any time. Nice. Okay. So um, the king is like um, looming on to me. And this is a bachelor party, right? This is not the masked ball, but there are there are dancers 
at mm -hmm. this party. Mm -hmm. yep. And while, while the king is circulating, uh, most of the dancers or the performers are going towards him, right? Like to entertain him. And I, I had like this nice vision of like this row of flamenco dancers with their skirts, right? They swish past um, these two guys uh, confronting each other. And when the swish happens, uh, when Vega is no places. longer there, uh, when Vega is no longer there, and the dancers go away. Right, that makes um, sense. Let's see if it works though, because oh, so that's a magic. magic. Yeah, that would be yeah. a magic card. Nice. So, Mimi, you know which four cards you have? Uh, which four cards I if have? If you click is the number four Vega? above your your picture. Wait, um, sorry, I, I, I hit the zoom to um, question. So, yeah, not for Ven Vega, for, for Melitza. What are Melitza's four cards for motivation and rolling? Red, forward? green, blue, Wait. and orange. Yeah. I am, I'm stuck in a very weird place. I'm not being able to, red, green, blue, and orange, yes. Okay. Oh, no, and right. then what, what did I get? You got gold. Gold. <laughs> Wait, uh, let me come back to the zoom. I'm, this is hey, while she's doing that can I, I i i forgot something and i feel like i'm not sure if i should say it now no, no, this is this is awesome this is actually it might impact, it might impact the game okay uh um, well this is kind of a meanwhile yeah, like, yeah so as you're writing so uh i what i the what my goal was actually was to find out how do you how do you play the game and that's what I forgot. <laughs> no, no, you your goal is how to learn to win this game, and I oh, totally know how oh, good, to win good, good. this game now. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I I absolutely know how to win this game now. <laughs> awesome. Okay. okay. Good. Good. So, so, so I uh, yeah I I have taken the form of one of the dancers and moved away. Um, however, however, <clears throat> the king who is a crab person, right, <clears throat> um, knows what just happened. Right, he he knows what just happened. He knows. Uh, They're this... familiar with shape shifting, right? Yeah. Right, right, and uh, he he knows that I've gone off as one of the dancers, but like the dancers are dressed wow. completely similarly, right? So, uh, and they're moving around different parts of the room, and he. <clears throat> He goes after them a little bit and it's not working out very well for him because different trains of people try to go behind, like follow him, right? So he he's getting, he's not really being able to follow the same train of dancers. And, uh, and then I transformed into somebody else. So I'm not staying as any one character. So I'm turning into this guy, that, that guy, I mean, well, I am turning into exact replicas of them, but the room is so full, and like I'm, and because I'm like shape shifting and moving around, people are not really noticing that I'm shape shifting or like another person suddenly has a doppelganger. Well, I am just except, being. So, yeah. so hold on, Mimi, because you failed, so things do not go your way. Yeah, no, because because the king knows. The king knows, but that but, is why so he's following I, like, her. Yeah, the so he's shields following, following. only delay the inevitable. Like right. the king will catch me. The king knows it's going on. There's only one other thing, shield. though. Like right now, somebody's doom is about to go off, or you all mm -hmm. lose the game. Whoa. So, the you know, the, you're already here on the space. If nobody activates their doom, then uh, total party Ooh. kill. So I activate who my else? doom. Oh, I activate my doom. Oh, okay. Oh. So Liam. Uh, a couple things happen. Uh, first of all, you had a successful check, so you have to remove the card that was the extra card that wasn't a part of your original four. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But you're also going to remove your doom, so you'll put both of those there, and your doom is no longer available for checks for you. Okay. So I'm, I'm not being able to take this card. Take card. Okay. Yeah. There Great. You go. There we go. Okay. So. Um. What happened to that card that was just there? Uh, that was that was my that was my extra card, the gold or the yellow card. Right. Where did it go though? Did oh, I deleted, deleted it? it. Yeah, that's perfect actually. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But now you also need to remove your doom card. Yeah. How perfect the poem. I think it's this one. Yeah, the blue one. Okay. So oh, I keep not dragging it. There we go. Okay. And uh, Liam, what happens when you activate your doom during the bachelor party? Uh, Sister Maria 
of the Inquisition. <laughs> it's finally decided to make her move and arrest Rodriguez for being a devil worshiper. Oh. So you're getting busted right now. Right now. Whoa. Okay. I'm going, uh, my character, now. as a quick side note, is going to just send her monkey to follow <laughs> Sister Maria and uh, and Rodriguez in case the monkey can help. Just now, do I get to say how it goes down, or does someone else have to say how it goes down? Well, it's your doom, so it's pretty bad. Uh, so yeah. you would you you get to say how it goes down as long as as long as I'm mean to myself. Got it. Yeah. So, so you don't. Sister Sister Maria is aware of what Rodriguez can do. She's been watching him for a long time. She's been she's been seeing what happens when people have a conversation with him for too long. Um, so she also knows that he's a spy master and he gets warning ahead of time a lot of the a lot of the time. So she had to go after him when she knew that he would be distracted. And the day before the wedding at a bachelor party, when she knows that he's going to be trying to, ex, you know, extract as many secrets as possible from as many people as he can, is the perfect time. However, she's not so uh, brash enough to just have the guards come busting in the door and be like, arrest that man. Because then he'll just say something like, leave me alone to everyone in the room. And then he'll just run. So she has uh, poisoned specifically his lobster bisque. <laughs> she, has, she has had a specific person following him. That to give was, him just it, that bowl. <laughs> it was one of the dancers is, is actually a plant by Sister Maria. And she has put a poison in the, in the dish. It's not going to kill him, but it's going to at least knock him out. Because, you know, he's got to stand trial for his evil deeds. He's got to be a public display and that kind of thing. So as he's eating, as he's spooning the lobster bisque into his face and walking over to try to mediate between Fernando and uh, totally not Vivi, um, <laughs> right before he gets up to them and totally not Vivi turns into other totally not Vivis, um, <laughs> he just kind of goes, ugh. And hits the ground, oh. like face it, like just full on face plants into the ground. Lobster bisque all over his robes and everything else, and a couple oh of dancers God. just kind of like show up and scoop him up and take him somewhere. Oh wow! Or start to take him somewhere. Start Great. to take him somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So, so save me, everyone. <laughs> I'm, so I'm in like I'm kind of in the hallway outside of the Queen's thing and I, I notice that you're being dragged away and I'm gonna send Monkey after you just to like uh report back to me. Right, to the where do they take them? So, yeah, so that's yeah. what my character is doing. Um work I'm keeping a beat on you. Well thank in you. Terms, yeah, so at this point you could choose to sort of like end the scene on this note. You have actually Yeah, I will well. I will end the scene. Yeah. End the okay. scene. So we have two people who still need to be protagonists, Mimi and Cam. Uh, I do. And oh, I uh, both of you also still need to use your magic. Uh, the complication isn't going to be an issue. Everything else is done in terms of like the win Wait, condition. Um, you have two orders to remove. So my complication is there, right? Uh, no, no, we don't, don't have complications wrong, anymore. Sword. We just have doom. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. If it's on the danger section, when it's on when when the queen's on the danger part of the sword, then no more complications arrive. Mm -hmm. So so uh, okay. So how do I use my magic again? Like I've been using my magic already, right? But you so... failed. So you basically need a successful check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so yeah. should I move to another scene? So yeah. now the wedding, it's like like the final wedding evening is happening. And so the king is up on the podium, the whatever. The, I'm just skipping through the wedding, like maybe the wedding just goes through. And the king knows that somebody is keeping tab, and but he doesn't know which one it is. And and I am in the in the crowd. So whose form am I in? I'm not even sure. Like I'm I'm in some form. You could draw and, a card for inspiration. Okay. A card. Here it comes. Inspiration card. So now I have. Now <laughs> I have. Oh my god. Perfect. Wow. That is so the most I, perfect card. Oh my amazing. god. So I have like a. 
skull mask and like a death thing wow. going and yeah so uh okay so that's what you're doing to set the wedding so far uh so did you say the ceremony was over the wedding is over like they're they're sitting it's a reception part right where performances are happening and the ball, ball i mean the dances happen after the wedding right yeah yeah okay right. so great um liam what do you want to add to the scene right now yeah um i want to add that um let's see so the uh yeah okay so as the scene is unfolding they are about to do the uh bride and groom first dance that is then going to be in involve everyone else coming to the floor dancing so a and but like the the lighting for some reason is kind of dimmer some of the musicians they're playing kind of a lower octave it seems very sinister mm -hmm. almost as if a sinister dance is about to start the sinister dance claire mm -hmm. um let's see here um maybe pull a card yeah i, I was gonna say like do i stay in the scene or do i go elsewhere in the palace um but and save me <laughs> yeah i kind of want to try to save you <laughs> i'll pull a card and we'll see we'll see if it says save or stay in scene well that's what the card says wow <laughs> that's a hard choice <laughs> Am I the sacrifice, or is being at the wedding the sacrifice? <laughs> Maybe not being at the wedding. She's missing out on the wedding. They're all. Yeah, I think um, the monkey, the monkey has come to report that they're waterboarding you in the dungeon. So <laughs> <laughs> God. just in, in front just to of warm me pearl, up a little. In front, in front of the green and black. In front pearl. of the green and black pearl. Yeah. So yeah. you're yeah. you're going yeah. in very soon. <laughs> Yeah, like this, like the special magic water from a different dimension. They're trying to get you to like talk, reveal yourself, change shape, and then the pearl is like starting to glow as you get closer to death. And when they, when you know, when you're dead, they can feed your corpse to it. So like this thing is happening. Um, so the monkey is to fetch me, and I'm not, you know, like I'm an archivist. I'm not like a big warrior, or whatever. But I do have this magical monkey, so I'm going to. Well, you do uh, know a warrior. Oh my gosh! All right, so monkey has come to fetch me to tell me what is happening. So I'm going to creep up behind uh, Jose Diaz and whisper in his ear, um, "Can I bar? Can I borrow you for a moment in the dungeon? They've got Rodriguez the Fair." So this, this works so well if you're just like dancing up to him and taking him for a turn. I think I think if if, if I'm there, it is um, definitely on the periphery. Like, and I, I think also I would also know what they're doing to to uh, to uh, Rodrigo. Uh, I'd be probably like the, my my boys would be the ones who kind of who probably took him into custody. And you put a stop to this. <sighs> the queen will not be pleased if you feed him to the pearl. Would she? <laughs> Wouldn't she though? I, I mean... don't think so. She he's one of her pet wizards. You know she wouldn't be happy if you got fed to the pearl. I'd try to stop it. Come on. So sorry. So right right now, just for me personally, my recollection of the story. Don't we? They... Doesn't she? She. It's her pearl, right? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, yeah. It. It's her pearl. But she so, feeds her duelist rivals to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. So maybe you've got some people that aren't so loyal in the Inquisition. Like the. They're corrupting the, her pearl. Like man. the people that have begun to infiltrate the area. Yeah. I think um, Sister Maria. And also, you've got all this really. information you need to get to me so that I can figure uh, out what to do. Uh, oh maybe. yes, I'm just um, trying to figure out. Uh, I but a part of me thinks that the queen, Princess Queen, the queen, she she knows. I'm just wondering, does she know what's happening um, here? Uh, yes, uh, Melisa. 
So one of my thoughts was that like all, all these heads of divisions have probably been told to throw traitors to the pearl. So like this person who's uh, holding Rodriguez now thinks Rodriguez is a traitor. So could be that. Could be that. So uh, the queen okay. knows, but the queen doesn't know that especially this person is going into the pearl. <laughs> She's busy gotcha. getting married. So. Right. And the gotcha. queen the queen even if she knew she might decide she might not prefer her wizards to die but she'd prefer her wizards to die than for her inquisition to realize she's been in on like you know the gotcha. devil devil bargains okay good then 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 i know what to do so since my my issues uh at the, the wedding that was not looked at very well so i've been demoted and now biff has taken over my place as the leader <laughs> of, of the thugs and so I know that even though I don't know exactly where where Rodrigo is being held uh, in the tomes, Biff would know. So I am going to make my way to Biff, and he is not standing guard. He's, uh, I want rather, I think like Claire's character's name is Viana. 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 Uh, change it in the in the in the Zoom. Uh, I say okay. Well, I, even though the, my character generally is an ass, uh, he's not straight up evil and this guy did basically save his life save his brain uh so it's like just follow me follow my lead and so we we go down to what was my office and uh so listen biff you know can i have a word with you you know man to man and uh you know biff uh he feels kind of bad about what happened listen listen bro i didn't mean to to chase you try to eat you i don't know what that was all about um <laughs> And this whole promotion, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't gunning for it, you know, we were, you know, because we we're bros. I was like, bruh, 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 bruh. Just go back <laughs> and forth like that for a second. Bruh. Bruh. And I, bruh. you know, I, I, uh, no, do we do like a fist, like a, you know, like a, a, a man kind of fist pound and I clap him on the, I clap, I grab his hand, and I bring him in and I use my magic when we do the, the claps on the, <gasps> the back of his, on his back. The, uh, <laughs> the cypher strike. <laughs> Cypher Strike! All right. Hopefully, with five Ooh, and he can transfer all the knowledge into him and paralyze him. Right. Mm. Okay. See, see if it I don't works. know if it goes that way. I learned a new skill. It goes both ways. <laughs> so, do you have gold? I do not have gold. I can tell you now. I oh. absolutely do not have gold. So, wait. That's at me. No, that's that's Mimi. Let me just double check. But I'm pretty sure I do not have gold. I will, oh, I will activate again. my doom since I'm watching this happen. Since I've followed them to the office. I'll activate my doom, and I'll be like, "Oh shit!" Oh, wait, 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 wait. I do have gold. That's the thing that. Oh no, not stealing. It's mine. How do I get out of here? You don't. Uh, you have orange, purple, I, green, red, and brown. I, have, I have, oh, it's brown. Yeah. Ah, oh, oh. too bad. Oh, all right. Yeah, <laughs> and anyway. you have gold now. Just you can take that into your hand now. <laughs> anyway, I'll activate my doom watching this happen, knowing that we're all about to like so things are going to go to shit because they're going to go to shit in a second. I'll just be like, oh shit. But instead, out of my mouth comes like a bunch of um, bisque. Shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, What's this? More bisque comes out. Oh. <laughs> and then I just back away. So that's my doom has been activated. I'll take it out of my hand. And you are vomiting bisque instead of words. Amazing. Uh, this also goes badly for you, though, there, yep. Jose. What happens? Uh, so he realizes that something's going on and he doesn't like it. It's like he thinks I'm coming on to him. He's like, yo, bro, bro, not cool. Not Look. cool. And he's like, hey, you crossed the line. <laughs> You're not married, bro. No, it's like, what well, in, goes in Cabo stays in Cabo. This is it. And he takes wow. a swing at me. Okay. Does it hit? Uh, yeah, it hits. But so, maybe. Look, yeah. you got six cards now. Magic got you into this yeah. problem. Magic so will get you what out. What I'm going to try, what I'm going to try and do is use my, my Cypher Strike on my face. So that when he... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so take this card into your hand. Uh, As you get hit, right? <laughs> you just, got six cards. There's no way he can fail this one. <laughs> there is one way he can fail this one. Oh, why did I say that? Okay, he doesn't. 
Oh god. Ah. <laughs> That's also a good card for that. Yeah. Inaction is the death before inaction is the is the The death before death. Death. Got it. I kept trying that. that too but much, you're too acting. Much, too much stuff on my screen. I don't I take the card. Uh, well, you don't take it this time. You're actually going to empty out all of the extra cards except your original four. Gotcha. But <sighs> the good news is lots of stuff gets accomplished here. And the narrative goes your way. Right. Hey, Carlos, I put my Doom card on the plate. I didn't know if I should just say remove card or just leave that for you. Uh, I'll take care of it. Um, okay. Just that way I, I know it gets put in the right place because Roll20 can be a little fastidious about these things. Okay. Got it. Oh, I realized so, now I was having issues. I was looking at somebody else's hand, and that was the problem. Okay, trying to. Those memes is so close. So, yeah. So, I, I am at the ball dance, and uh, now that the king and the queen are on the floor, the dance that's happening is, like, not a couple dance. It's more of a, you know, one of those folk dances where, like, the men and the women are on two different sides, and they start moving towards each other. Right. 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 And so, I am right next to the queen as, like, some girl some woman, you know, noble, noble women, woman, and I am telling the queen that the king is the problem, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm telling, like I lean over to her and I'm like, your majesty, I figured out it's the king that's the problem. And, uh, and she looks at me and said, I thought I told you to be Vivi. What are you doing here? Uh, Sick burn. Yeah, yeah. And then then he's like, yeah, but she, she's like, you know, I, I, I needed to be near you. Like, I, I needed to be near you to protect you, right? And she's like, sure. And you would protect me as like this normal, regular noble lady. I told you to be Vivi for a reason. So that's my turn. Okay, so that's that will be your setup. Uh, let's just finish up quickly with Cam. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cam, you are hit in the face, but your magic finally activates. What happens? So it's a little bit in slow motion. You know, you can imagine that punch coming in, cracking the side of my face, watching the lips, you know, rotate and ripple around the fist. A tooth flies loose, but I managed to angle my face in just the right way to, to absorb the knowledge of exactly where, uh, uh, where, where Rodrigo is being held. And I hit the ground, and uh, and Biff is is a little bit shaken, you know, because uh, that kind of uh, relationship information shouldn't have come out, you know, whatever he thinks at whatever he thinks he's talking about. So he's like, "I gotta take a walk, man. When I come back, you better be gone." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Claire, uh, between vomits, helps me up, and I mumble to him, uh, and she interprets interprets. Uh, where where they're uh, holding Rodrigo, uh, which is in the sub basement, uh, down the hall, just above the I guess the where the oh, you have to go through the kitchen, uh, and then through the kitchen there's a, there's a there's a a key you have to lock unlock the uh, to a secret room and you go down the stairs and that's where he's being held and waterboarded. I'll understand this and then I will. I will, since I can't talk without spitting something up, find a pen and paper and write, let's get um, Melitza, who can impersonate a guard. There we go. So we're going to, I'm going to head back into the ballroom, right? At, like, oh, quick no, break. I, I have a very good situation for this. Sure. So, uh, so we're at the dance and I'm like arm to arm with the queen, where the queen is like, why did you not do what I told you to? And... So you're like, like I'm, I'm, I'm like right, but now I have, like now I can't, and and the dance lines are moving at the same time, right? Like they're moving towards each other and away from each other. So the king is like possibly giving me a, the stink eye or something. Like he probably, like he's he doesn't know yet, but he's trying to see if I'm that person. And uh, and then he can't do anything because like I'm right next to the queen, so I, I I say but I've like already transformed away and she's like oh my god just go back to like my uh, whatever boudoir or counter or what thing like bedroom and 
hope that the laundry has not gone to <laughs> wash again <laughs> wash yet because you you don't need to smell the person from their body like there can also be oh she wants you to smell the so when she laundry. leaves you can run into her on the way to the bedroom yes, and tell her yes. what's going so, on so i am going to like the third floor or somewhere where the queen's boudoir is and i'm like who am i dressed well I'm, I'm dressed as one of the noble ladies but like at this point do you want to be knowing that i am that person like a um, shapeshifter? If, it's possible if, like i i see you and i see hi or something oh right and then and she's way too familiar for a noble and you're like oh and then i'll be like wait and as i say wait uh, <laughs> like iron keys come out of my mouth oh, and wow. then i just like kind of roll my eyes iron keys because i'm thinking of Rodri rodriguez uh -huh, locked up. you know and so i just <laughs> and then i try again you have to but instead of words i spit up a pen and paper and then I'm like, <laughs> I write down, Rodriguez in dungeon, help, impersonate guard, please, question mark, <laughs> give it to you. Um, I, I, I say even better. I am going, I, I am coming back as uh, Ven Vega. And I mean, Ven Vega obviously has the kind of authority. Right. And, uh, so I'm, I'm just like, you wait right here. I am transforming and coming back. And so, you know, move forward like another 10 minutes or something and i am back as ven vega and, and you're all uh, heading into the dungeon do you yep. so do you want to use your magic this time to transform yeah. it to see if the laundry thing works since <sighs> normally you sniff a real person. you got five cards you got a good chance here we go it's i a have blue. a blue i have a blue oh good <laughs> i'm not gonna die I was gonna say otherwise so... I have to cut myself <laughs> and release mm -hmm. my team. Like sh should I do that to Vienna because she's spitting too much bisque? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So we uh, So yeah, art, the... you're Vis Vega. Yeah. So we we head to the dungeon. Great. So um Mimi, whatever card is the extra card, not part of your four original, you'll give that to me too. Uh, and uh, then you'll be working on your last check there. But you also accomplished your task because now you've turned into Ven Vega for the party. So that goal right. is now accomplished uh, in terms of like your protagonist. We still have one right. order to get through and uh, one uh, Cam protagonist moment. Once you get me out, I think I know how it'll go down. <laughs> Why is Jose Diaz trying to steal a card from me? Huh? Like, what? Well, what what is this jose i mean i'm not gonna help you any if you're stealing my cards no i'm not stealing anything from you yeah jose yeah, are you I, still I, here actually i lost i lost you here are you still in roll 20. i'm here oh not in roll okay. 20 though yeah I, I i had a notification saying jose is trying to steal my card and huh? there, well, you know, i'm not going I'm to just... help you if you steal my card <laughs> like that is not cool <laughs> yeah not cool man so okay, what do so I you're headed to down you? to the dungeon. I, I return to you the last card that I got? Yeah, so basically, you know your four original cards. Whatever your fifth card was, the bonus card, uh, just put that on the board here so I can return it to the deck. How do I return it? Uh, you you left-click left and then drag it. Yeah. Left -click. I have a question, Carlos. It says there's one protagonist left in expanding. one order. Wh who's... Whose order? I thought everybody has been protagonist by this point. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but he didn't Cam resolve was... his order. Yeah. Yeah. Cam, well, Cam's order was resolved by Liam, but we still have one order to go, right? We have so... Liam's yeah. order to be resolved, which is who's pulling the strings. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. I've managed to put my card out. Got it. I mean, so I think takes... Liam, I think Liam did both mine and his at the same time. Is that what happened? Well, I got to bring the one who's pulling the strings to um, Lorena in secret. Oh, in secret? Mm hmm. Hmm. So I know how it's going to go down. You just got to spring me. No, wait. Right. So, but this wait, is still Mimi, Mimi's protagonist because it's going her way. So now mm -hmm. she's going to spring you. Okay. Well, so yeah. I, I mean, well, I, I, we just finished. Am I there? Yeah. Because I, I can tell them who the string puller is i know that so oh that's I, true I, you did tell the queen already who the string puller is 
Yeah, and I'm I'm like you wouldn't believe it. But I have to. But bring I know them actually you would believe it because I have you know, to bring them to her I mean, in secret though. So so yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm like you wouldn't believe it, but but you actually would like knowing our queen, uh, you know who was she marry anyway, and but Ray Fernando is the bad dude, and now we're like. <laughs> what can we do about it like we thought it was like somebody smaller that we could remove and uh, it's the king and it's uh they've gotten married i gotta play just just spring me <laughs> mimi as a protagonist you can move into the dungeon and use your vv character you know it's like because your magic worked you can describe how you remove um rodriguez from the dungeon um yeah I, I i go in and uh okay who who can give orders to this person uh what's what's her name the uh, uh, maria maria yeah, yeah. Maria. Who, who, yeah who can give orders to her like well, she I mean, is... she's not she's not there. She's you know doing head of the inquisition stuff. It's the the thugs that are working them over at this point. So I come in and I I am like, what's going on here? Because there's like some fight, like a fight broke out between the Lord of this and Lord of that, and there aren't enough people. And like, what the hell are you guys doing here? Is this what the queen pays you for? <laughs> and so they scamper. they scamper. And we've got Jose and Viana and you, right? And so we kind of un unbind Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. and he goes, yeah, so <laughs> now, now everybody knows who the problem person is, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we go back to the to the ballroom. Okay, yeah. And, so this is and at this point, I am dressed as, yeah. yeah I am dressed as Vivi. Got mm -hmm. it. Uh, this is the point where the, that scene would end, and now we would start one more scene to determine success or failure here. You've got one order to accomplish. You've oh, got God. two dooms and cushion. Oh, uh, God. And you've got Pam, <laughs> who has to be the protagonist of the scene. Oh. So, you know, Liam, you can, you're, you know, Rodriguez can help determine mm -hmm. how it's going to play out, but, but, but Cam has be to Cam be the hero. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Can, so, can, can I participate as well? I think yeah, everybody, we're all going to be in. Everybody yeah. has to, but I think, we're all gonna be uh, Liam, if you want to set the scene. Sure. Um, so Rodriguez comes up out of the water, gasping and spluttering. Everybody, he's like, tell me everything. And everybody kind of like <laughs> info dumps on him. Um, <laughs> what you call like... it? Um, Vetiana <laughs> tries to, and she just spits a whole bunch of bisque on him again. And he's like, not you, not you. <laughs> um, and uh, so, I, but he gets caught up to speed and he's like, okay. You started beef as Vivi with with Fernando at the party. He's going to want to fight you at some point because there's already beef between you two. You need who to get you, him uh, away. So, sorry, who from, are you talking to? Uh, I'm talking to uh, Mimi's character at this okay. point. So go, saying to um, uh, Melisa, I'm like, you've already started beef as Vivi with him. Fernando already wants a piece of you. You need to get Fernando away from the queen as Vivi. So... I need to also bring him to the queen in secret. So what's going to happen is we're going to slip a note to Fernando that says that you have formally challenged him to a duel in, in such and oh. such room. You're going to bring him to that room. I'm going to tell the queen what's going down and that I've, that we're delivering the one that's pulling the strings to her in secret. Or you can have him. Confess. I mean, why can't Jose bring him? Because like, if I am trying to bring him, Jose he might can escort him as a second. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. The way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just yeah. You can you can you need to reinstate me as head of the Inquisition's uh, armed armed contingent. Right. Okay. So it I'll... is done. I'm 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 I'm, I'm like the yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll reinstate Jose. Jose, Jose will yeah. be the one that actually busts them when they're finally in private. Yeah. Your my idea is like we obviously have to bust the king in some way or the other. But the wedding has already happened. All, all, all the people have seen the king. So basically, I transform into the king. Uh huh. And he goes cool. into Pearl. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that is not a bad idea. So you have to perpetually be the king from now on. 
<laughs> once once we get rid of the real king, right? Heavy's the head, baby. You know, Heavy's only, the head. Well, it's better than tasting poisons all day. I mean, only when there are public right. appearances. Right, right. The step or, or I just have to, you have to job. keep a change of his clothes. You have to keep his clothes before you put him in the pearl, so you have, always have something to He's sniff. a king! He has tons of clothes. <laughs> Back home. <laughs> if only we knew somebody that could duplicate his smell or something for you. Or, or Ooh, we, could we, could take his, we could take his bride and go back home, where there's a lot of things with his fragrance. <laughs> but we have a great perfumer who, if we just give an example of his clothing, probably could recreate. She the can smell. make it in perpetuity. Could also do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And thus, bring it all together. I would have got right. away with the two if it wasn't for you. All right, kids. Jose. I can't be seen though. This is gonna have to be your rodeo. Oh yeah. Protagonist. Okay. So <laughs> I blow my whistle, all right? And my thugs come back. It's like, yo, what happened to Biff? Yo, some Biff's having a moment, but don't worry about Biff. All right. I'm back in charge. You know, fall in. We have an arrest to make. I don't tell them who they're arresting. Uh, I just have them follow me into the ballroom. We make a scene. It's like everybody back, everybody back. You, you watch the walls. These people over here, so just they're just courting up everybody because he remembers in his head what he wrote down that there are other people here who were part of this this infiltration. Uh, and at that moment, that is when he, because Rodriguez Rodriguez is here as well. No, we, yeah, where, where, where am I taking you? Taking him. Melitza is yeah, going we... to issue a challenge. Yes, gotcha. A duel to the mm -hmm. king. To the so, king. So I, we also asked Rodriguez at this point. I think. Uh, why don't you go and find Marinelle Curie? Because we would need a lot of fragrance happening. Yeah, soon. I'm on it. <laughs> and you can and you can give Marinelle orders to mm -hmm. make tell no so, one of what we do here today. Yeah. So I guess I, I there's I I I announce I announce the challenge or does uh, that's something that or so uh, no or I tell uh I tell I announce that uh, the Vega has. Uh, an announcement to make, blah, blah, blah. I'll let him talk for himself. Or does he have so, someone else who got for him? To to make this work, basically, and to see if this works, we have to see if you are successful, Cam, in actually clearing the room and stuff, or if, uh, you know, Bedlam or something else happens. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, let's do so, that. So if you succeed at this, this does clear the final order, and then you will be able to move into the Deumont. Deumont. So okay. you have your four cards. Oh Christ! Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> God damn it! Let me see. Let me see. Oh, I don't think <gasps> I have this one. I have it. I have it. I have do it. I have you it. Do? I do. I thought that was one of your extra ones. The brown. Which the one did I? What did I? Top? What did I start with? Hold on. Look at my character sheet. Get out of the way. Get these cards out of the way. I have. Why does my character look? Oh, that's, no, that's not me. Okay. I did Cam's player sheet. I have. Oh, no, he red. does. You just, oh, he does. Yeah. He does. Oh, oh that's goodness. so great. Oh. <laughs> so, so this is, this is like yeah. the path to victory. This is, this is, this is vindication from that other game. <laughs> so does, does Cam manage to? Wait. He does. Did he, did he, are you sure? Because the fruit desires to be devoured was a card he pulled in during a scene earlier. Oh, uh -huh. did you get rid of the wrong card? I mean, I guess what we could do is we could just play it out at this point. Okay, that's fine. You know, okay, like... right. It's just so wait, game. <laughs> I, well, but here, my, here are my cards and we can just see. I'm, I'm reading, maybe you know it. Even dragons are murdered for their gold. The trained tongue enjoys a little bitterness. If it unlocks, it is a lock pit. And yet, however, is stumbling progress. Does any one of those sound like a brown card? No, well, progress, no. Progress is one of them was was Espacio instead of that. So. Oh, we're hand waving. No. We're hand waving. Oh no! Can I just work it because it's more fun this way. So let's do it this yes. way. Yes. Let's not end it with a fail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we still have a couple dooms, but yeah. Well, but oh. also you gave me an idea for a mechanic here that whenever you have to go down to four, you can decide which four you want to keep, which I kind oh, of like. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Yeah, because that way it gives you a little bit more power to know like what has been played and maybe you can up your chances a little bit, gives the player a little more agency. Or Just right here, I have. Yeah. Wait, so if I activate my Doom right now, though, with that. Um, what do you need? To... 
You would still oh. make it need to make another roll though. Yeah. Or another sure. draw. Did did you fail this one? He did. Yeah, because yeah, I failed it. I failed this one. So I'd have to I have to roll my doom. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> All right. If, if it's going to be more fun for you that way, then let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So I'm going to uh, roll my doom. So which one was that? Hold on. Characters. I would say just get rid of your brown card at this point, since your doom was the purple card that you already got rid of. Okay. So there's right. brown cards. Because you're going to take card. a brown card and you're going to give up a brown card. So it can actually just leave it as it is. And okay. I'll just sounds, get rid of this one. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's move this along. But so describe you were wearing doom the brown the card. That happens. So my doom is I get eaten. That's basically <laughs> my doom. Uh, they smell my blood and I'm irresistible. Oh, you've seen this happen already. Mm -hmm. So uh, I see that the crowd is starting to get anxious, and I can I'm looking at the crowd and I can see. Oh, I know that face. I know that face. I know who here is part of the the the, the cabal. And they're not going to stand down. As a matter of fact, they're starting to uh, move in what appears to be a more dangerous mode, like a more, or a more dangerous fashion. Like if they get found out, they're just going to take over right now rather than subterfuge. So I look at Rodriguez and I say to him, remember this day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there, but you can, you can. Or to the queen, Maybe. the queen, remember yeah. this day. And I mean, then... why haven't you come back by now? I, oh, I okay. Have... I, can, I can be back then. Yeah. All right. I'm there. So you look at me and you say, remember this day. And I'm like, no, don't. And I, oh, oh no, get the queen out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I will <laughs> activate my monkey and try to escort the queen out. Yeah. Sure. The, the Let's game. see if it works, Claire. Okay. And I cut myself. You have a brown, oh. Claire? Oh. No. <laughs> oh, this is a shit show. Well, okay, because like, I mean, it's so now that you've done that, someone else has to activate their doom or or it's game over. That would have that's to be me. me. That's it's just, it's you. Okay, it's, it's my you. doom. Mm -hmm. Where you get sick okay. finally? Yeah. So I mean, I have come down as this guy, but I am suddenly. <laughs> Oh God! Like taken, <laughs> taken by. I'm, I'm trying to work, make this work. I suddenly start sniffing really hard and uh, not being able to breathe anything. There you go. Um, I have an asthma on, attack. On the other hand, my transformation has happened, but I've like, I've like come into this room which is probably airy. You know, the ballroom is probably airy, and the north wind is blowing through it. So, <laughs> so I know that I am in this guy's form. I can't change anymore. <gasps> oh, so you have to stay this is like Vivi. my. You're just die. stuck as Vivi now. Okay. So, so I, I just have that one chance. Right. Wow. So then, um, Cam, you, yes. you were describing yourself being eaten. So I am going to, oh, after I know that the queen is out of the way, I am going to cut open my wound. Uh, so it, how it's is the queen, queen out of the way? The queen is not out of the way because I, Claire I, I failed. Tried, but because I because Claire failed. Yeah. But no, but didn't Mimi succeed? No, 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 no. No, nope. just that just she means just I stopped the game. Okay, okay. Yeah, she right, just fine. yeah. So I okay. I realized that this is there's just this one chance. So I do like my loud coughing and like walk into the room and still coughing, not really feeling very good. I am like. Ray Fernando, why don't I challenge you to the queen's one of the queen's favorite pastime, being one of her favorite courtiers? Let's challenge you to a duel. <laughs> so the duel takes place where the queen's duels always take place. In the um, torture room. <laughs> no, I I think that's an. Don't arena. worry. On no, the but... on the way, we'll we'll redirect them. Right, <laughs> but. but... We still have to deal with the fact that Cam, Cam has Doom. Yes. Has Doom activated. Cam so, is tasty yeah. now. Yeah, there you go. So just make sure that the queen is, you know, someone has a hold of her. Uh, so I uh, put a cut a gash into my hand. Uh, blood is free flowing. And I run for the nearest window and jump through. Oh, gosh. Okay. Ho hoping so that the happened? others will follow, will follow after me. Like lemons Ooh. after my blood. Whoa! <laughs> so, 
let's He's see if siren. this works. Okay, so so just so you know, uh, Cam, you have no extra cards. <laughs> this is going to be bad. You're down a card and up a card, so you're at four. So this, can, this can card... see if Cam succeeds because that, that can help me. Uh, I mean, well, I guess we're going to find out if the game ends it. now or not. Right. Like this, no, no, no. This is the card. So, you do. This what is, is it. it? Is this there's no more dooms. Cam? Yeah, there's no more dooms. It works! <laughs> Woo! Yes. So all the people in the ballroom basically follow Cam outside the window <laughs> or something. Leaving okay. the ballroom empty. If oh my god! So like Rodriguez and, and then uh, Rodriguez kind of puts his hand on Fernando. And is like, don't you go anywhere. Look uh, at this oh. ludicrous card, everybody. So wait, like, wait, wait. I, you know, I, I am stuck somewhere. I, I I need to figure out where I'm stuck. So there's um, Rodriguez. There's a uh, Marinelle Curie in this room now, right? And well, I got after... I got her order for the the perfume. Yeah, but yeah, I kept yeah. her so where she brought... was. No, yeah. no, wait, wait, wait. Let's not move too quickly. No, no, no. Yeah. We we need to bring her because she can harvest the king, basically. Sure, sure. sure. But but Cam, so... you jumped out of a window. This worked according to plan, but also you jumped out of a window. What mm -hmm. happened? Uh, it was over the we were on the tower over the over the uh, the I guess the moat. Let's put it that way. And uh, I hit the water. Uh, I probably break some bones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm not Gotta a diver. clench your clench your butt cheeks. Uh, so I so I saved the butt cheeks. Thank God, that's most <laughs> important. Good. Yeah. Um, and uh, the others, they do, in fact, follow me out the window. Uh, I, some of the people who went out the window, they were, in fact, not part of the conspiracy, but all the people who were part of, who were uh, not in that room, they definitely did follow me out the window. Yes! So, had to break some, had to break some eggs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't order us not to kill anybody, so. Oh, I my mean, gosh. Yeah. Uh, or maim. Um, uh, but yeah, so they hit the water and, and in their frenzy, they're not really paying attention. And so they don't, they did not clench their butt cheeks. Uh, so, um, yeah, we got some, we got some cleanup, uh, in the moat. Yeah. I, I survived though. I definitely survived. Awesome. You know, there's like, there's a red wedding, but then there's a bisque wedding. And I think you just made a <laughs> moat full bisque. of bisque. The bisque wedding. Yeah. So, so I have lost my sense of smell. And as I described in my doom, each time it's, it keeps increasing its duration. So now I will not return to my sense of smell in a week. So we know that we need to replicate the king, but the replication won't happen right now. We right. just have to destroy him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I, I'm also coughing. I'm like in a really bad state and I have uh, stepped into the duel. Can I be really dramatic and be like, Reina says at this point that I will take over for you. Oh, I think ah. perfect. I think oh perfect yeah, you get to name a second and you pick Lorena. I love it. <laughs> your perfect. champion, you name your champion for you. <laughs> yep, and then Rodriguez locks all the doors. <laughs> <laughs> the scene can kind of end with like the face of Fernando going, <gasps> Like I didn't sign up for this. <gasps> my like demonic Shoot. monkey chairs on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Cam has alerted us that we need to finish up in about the next fifteen minutes, just because it, we've been going a pretty long time here. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move on to the day you mon. Uh, so here's what happens at the end here, folks. You are no longer playing your characters. Your characters have won the day. Instead, you're going to be playing the alien who is your character's caseworker, who has been watching all of the action that has been going on in this, you know, this happy wedding, you know, where only a few score of people died. Uh, and and what that win? Do Isn't that win? Evaluate uh, your uh, subject of this. So basically, how your character performed and if they'll be able to do the. Uh, conscious con the cosmic consciousness so we'll do the same thing we've done before we'll just read in order order is claire followed by cam followed by mimi followed by liam so claire this is your card 
Welcome, enlightened members of the cosmic consciousness. Cam. Well, for today's meeting, we have only one agenda item. <laughs> <laughs> we will review the Espadan's performance during their most recent crisis. And Liam, who might be muted? Liam, you're muted, yeah. If we deem them ready, we can invite them to join the cosmic consciousness. <laughs> Membership benefits to the cosmic consciousness include... Nigh in omniscience. Limitless technology. Immortality. <laughs> Great mask. And eternal peace and prosperity. First, we will hear from each Espadan wizard's case worker. Who will describe their client's performance during the crisis. And if said client has proven worthy. We'll bestow on said client a certificate of achievement. <laughs> Is that me? That's oh, sorry, no. Which said client will receive a pod admission to the cosmic consciousness? If that ever happens. Which case worker wishes to speak first? So in any order, talk about your character's performance. In the voice of your alien caseworker. Oh, God. Okay. Well, I have to say that you know, my character, uh, my character, that Jose, you know, he was always a bit of a stiff, a thug, a criminal, a malcontent. And I gotta say that uh, given the uh, the influence of others like Rodriguez and others around him, that he stepped up and was a little bit less of a troglodyte. So I must say that he <laughs> has, uh, he has redeemed himself in actually acting like a human being for about 15 minutes. So, uh, but not a full 16 minutes, which really is the requirement. So I'm going to say that uh, he is not making the specific. I, I, I appreciate the effort, but still a fail. <laughs> I feel that Vienna was always kind to her monkey. Important, very important. Uh, and a few decades of talking in nothing but bisque and other mouth like objects will teach her very fine lessons. Perhaps we will revisit the notion of the cosmic consciousness at the end of her human lifespan. <laughs> Rodriguez had the desire to start a brand new society on the ashes of the old. Instead, he managed to maintain the status quo. For that reason, he fails. <laughs> So I have always been impressed by Melissa Exposita's ability to survive because that girl has been losing her abilities little by little. And uh, so I was very impressed that she made it nearly to the end, especially because after she transformed into that guy, the queen's boyfriend, and she she got quite a bit of the wind hitting her and she did not collapse but on the other hand her next attempt to be that person was a little less than successful so overall great performance she was nearly there <laughs> maybe the next time she'll be there <laughs> her next life <laughs> all right that is a nice before she dies <laughs> <laughs> Good assessment. <laughs> and with that, you go off and do alien things, and that is Negocios Infinales. Congratulations on winning on the very last card draw possible. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just glad it wasn't a repeat of the last time. The last one was... Oh, that was carnage the last time we played, but this was really cool. Great job, everybody. It was quite the spider web of all the things that people were pulling together. It was pretty great. <laughs> Thank you for playing with us, everybody. 
Yes. Thanks Thank for you having us. Everybody. <laughs> Thank Audience you, Carlos and Claire, Deborah for Holden. providing uh, a great Those of you game. who are watching now, thank you so much for sticking around and watching the game. That was uh, really, really fun. We had a great audience. Thank you both for uh, participating. Uh, I'm very glad that we got uh, the perfume maker there at the end as well uh, for all the work that you had done, Deborah. Uh, I guess I would say, Cam. Well, she still has work. So she has work. The king has to be harvested. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A sentence I've never heard before. So, uh, <laughs> Cam, do you, do you want to take us out? Uh, just very quickly, you know, over the course of the season and seasons to come, we will definitely be doing more games uh, for all Clydecast subscribers so you can get involved with this one and others that we pick up and we want to try and do just to be more interactive with our audience. Uh, so please do contribute, uh, continue to contribute to the Clydecast as we make new stories, find new writers, uh, and help uh, kids you know who want to join us and also be a bit more speculative which, because we all need a little bit more speculation in the world uh and with that thank you carlos and claire and uh melisa and uh, rodriguez i'm sorry uh Vera, vega no what was your name claire i, I can't remember huh? viana then viana and viana uh and deborah and mary uh uh marinel curie and holden for his support who also happens to be one of the editors for the client cast uh, so okay. thank you all and get some sleep because it is now it's nine minutes to Friday. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.